Last year, 16 of WWE's best cruiserweights clashed in an eight-week tournament to decide who stood above the rest at 205 pounds and under. This year, we do it all over again. Sunday afternoons at 12 p.m. Eastern Time, kicking off on September the 29th, 16 men representing SmackDown, NXT, and TNA Wrestling will participate in the 2024 edition of the Cruiserweight Classic. With the field more wide open than ever before, who will scratch and claw their way to greatness and be crowned the winner of the historic Cruiserweight Classic? But here we are inside the Hammerstein Ballroom, and it is time to kick off the Cruiserweight Classic. The following is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring from Cleveland, Ohio. Weighing in at 199 pounds, Johnny Gargano. Well, Johnny Gargano kicked off 2023 as becoming one half of the World Tag Team Champions with Tommaso Ciampa. That championship reign coming to an end back at WrestleMania in February. And since then, Gargano has made his way to SmackDown and has been fighting an uphill battle to gain momentum. But in recent months, Johnny Gargano start, finally starting to catch some W's on the blue brand and now finds himself back in the Hammerstein Ballroom ready to participate in the Cruiserweight Classic. Could tonight be the night, as we mentioned, that propels Johnny Gargano into a whole different stratosphere in his career. Of course, the winner of the tournament in eight weeks' time will be determining a number, number one contender for the WWE Cruiserweight Championship. Could very well be one of these two men. And his opponent from Kobe, Japan, weighing in at 156 pounds, Akira Tozawa! Akira Tozawa was introduced to the WWE back in the inaugural Cruiserweight Classic in 2016, a tournament he made it to the third round of 32 in that chair in that tournament, excuse us. And back in 2017, Akira Tozawa accomplished the goal of becoming the WWE Cruiserweight Champion. It was a short-lived reign, but nonetheless, the championship was around Tozawa's waist for the time being. All these years later, Tozawa finds himself back where it all started, in the midst of the Cruiserweight Classic. And is this tournament going to be what finally turns around Akira Tozawa's momentum? Tozawa, a very underappreciated, undervalued talent among some of the eyes, dare I say. Akira Tozawa with a ton of tools, world traveled. We're going to put him on display here tonight. The bell has sounded in the Tr Cruiserweight Classic 2023 edition has officially begun. I want to thank you for joining us this Saturday afternoon in Hammerstein Ballroom, New York City, where this entire tournament is going to animate over the next eight weeks. Gargano and Tozawa kicking us off. Johnny Gargano, obviously a lot of speed and agility through both of these men, but Gargano can be known as a mat technician at times. Here, Tozawa loves to take it to the sky, also very physical with his strikes. It should be very interesting to see who's going to get the upper hand in the early going so far. Seems like Johnny Gargano is that man. But as this matchup progresses, is Akira Tozawa going to have more endurance than Johnny Wrestling? Each and every match in this tournament is going to mean so much. Single elimination, win, you move on, lose, you go home. Everybody's fighting for the same end goal. Have your name in the history books as the winner of the tournament and also a future opportunity at the Cruiserweight Championship currently held by Legado del Fantasma Santos Escobar. Tozawa taking his eye off the ball there. Kind of early in the feeling out process. Might have underestimated Johnny Gargano. Now Gargano back to his feet. Saw a little bit of a tail of the tape, if you will, between these two men. Prior to the bell, as we mentioned, Johnny Gargano, former NXT Grand Slam champion, doing all there is to do down in the black and gold brand. Tozawa had some great matches down in NXT, and of course, former Cruiserweight champion. But both of these men itching to gain momentum, itching to move forward in the tournament, and itching for another championship opportunity. And it can all start right here tonight in Manhattan, New York. 
Tazawa with a nice overhand shot to Gargano. You see both of these men giving it all they have, but also taking it a little bit slower than the normal momentum of Tazawa and Gargano. A little bit of a feeling out process here. This fight gets taken to the outside. Tozawa on the outside. Johnny Gargano face first with the floor here at Hammerstein. Tozawa pulling out some strength. Trying to throw Johnny Gargano off his game plan. Bring something to the table that Gargano may not have been expecting out of Tozawa tonight. Johnny Gargano, he wasn't a former NXT Grand Slam champion for nothing. He has fought some of the toughest battles as this industry has ever seen. They're willing to go the distance with Tozawa if necessary tonight. And a nice neck breaker off Gargano's arrival back inside the ring. Jared Tozawa now. Again, taking a little bit slower, but picking his spots and they're definitely working out for him. Nice Saito there. Tozawa showcasing some of that strength that again, Gargano might not have been expecting Tozawa to bring to the table. Nice dodge by Johnny Wrestling there, a big time DDT to try to change the tides of this match. Tozawa face first off the canvas, now Gargano into the ropes, nice takedown here, and a kick right to the heart. Might be enough to knock the wind out of Tozawa at least for the three. Will that do it? Only a one count there. Gargano gonna have to throw more at Akira Tozawa tonight to keep him down in such a high profile contest. Nobody wants to go home in the tournament overall, but you certainly don't want to be the first casualty of 16. But only one of these men can move on to the quarterfinals, and we will find out who that is going to be in mere moments here in New York. Gargano off the reversal, a nice head scissors takedown. Still to come tonight in your main event, Dominic, Ray, the Mysterio family collides in the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic. What a matchup that is gonna be! And Gargano with another Tornado DDT into Zawa on spaghetti legs. Using the ropes to get to his feet, but it only works as a detriment. Now Gargano eyeing up his man here. Two pace to his seat through the ropes. And Johnny Wrestling starting to roll. Tozawa controlled a few moments there, as you saw. But Gargano has shifted in this matchup. And back in control is the whole shebang. Going for the discus lariat, and he hits it. It's a signature move out of the arsenal of Johnny Wrestling. Into the cover. Dead center of the canvas, but it's only a one. That was a nice stretch of maneuvers out of Gargano and a, a testament of Akira Tozawa's toughness that he kicked out at one. And a testament to how much he wants this victory tonight. Able to reverse whatever Gargano had in mind for the middle buckle. But can he capitalize? Nice backdrop. Simple yet effective. Seen a lot of powerful maneuvers out of the arsenal of Tozawa tonight, but there you go. Tozawa showcasing multiple tricks. Delivers his own takedown on Gargano. And a super kick, and I think it landed on the back of the head. Akira Tozawa all over the map tonight. Strikes, powerhouse maneuvers, high flying ability. Tozawa bringing everything in the kitchen sink to the dance. And that's definitely going to be his best trick to try to move to the quarterfinals. Nice kick to the knee, Gargano down and out, and a shining wizard, Gargano may be seeing stars into the cover. Oh, and a two count, how close was that for Tozawa? Now Tozawa is heading to the top, Gargano may not like the view, but not the landing Tozawa was looking for, crash and burn, and Gargano once again changes the tides. Great reversal there out of Johnny Wrestling. If Tozawa hit that senton, it could have been all she wrote. Damage certainly done off that shining wizard. Might not have got the three count, but Johnny Wrestling certainly gonna feel that tomorrow morning. Now Gargano, a little bit of a sense of urgency there out of that sprint by Tozawa. And now to the middle buckle. Now Gargano's getting fired up, and he's getting Manhattan, New York behind him. Off the middle buckle, and whatever he was going for, Tozawa had it scouted. Oh, now look at this, again, throwing a different trick at Johnny Gargano, trying to throw him off the game plan. Looking to stretch out the rib cage, make him submit. Gargano's gotta be reeling in pain, but trying to break the hold. And he does in a very unique manner. Nice head scissors takedown by Johnny Gargano. Now whipping Tozawa off into the corner. 
And that is a test right there to show you how much this matchup is starting to add up. Tozawa goes down, and Gargano brings him to the canvas once more. And another kick out off the one. Yeah, this very well may be a matchup of who wants it more, and you really got to give it up to Akira Tozawa tonight. Surviving some of Gargano's best, but a springboard, Tornado DDT, may be bringing this matchup to a screeching halt. Now Tozawa in the corner, and I think we know what comes next. Slingshot, Tozawa may have been dealt the knockout blow, but only a two. Johnny Gargano pulling out the slingshot, but not enough. What a great contest we have on hand, kicking things off in the 2023 Cruiserweight Classic. That's Tozawa now, back to the submission hold. Does he have the strength to tap out Gargano? Or is he simply just trying to tame Gargano? Stop the momentum dead in its tracks. Gargano, having the same maneuver scouted, goes back to the well with what works. Tozawa cutting him off. This matchup starting to pick up steam. Look at this, cross jacket into the German. And Gargano tried to roll to the outside to catch a breather, but Akira's on his tail. This match is picked up. It has turned into a new gear. Gargano and Tozawa throwing everything and more at each other. As the fight gets taken to the outskirts of the ring and Tozawa hits that senton. Just imagine if he hits the one that he was looking for earlier off the top rope. That crushing blow could be the final nail in the coffin of Gargano's chances at winning this tournament. Light continues on the outside. This thing goes to a double count out. It will be a draw and neither man will advance. All well, remains to be seen what happens from there. But Tozawa sending Gargano back inside the squared circle. Tozawa looking for a convincing finish tonight. Wants to make some noise in the cruiserweight division. Goes for the cover. Gets the two. Gargano pops the shoulder off the canvas. The matchup continues. Manhattan, New York, in appreciation. Little we'll collar and elbow here. Tozawa with the Gargano off. Goes for the elbow. Nobody home. Oh, wait, there's a strike. Gargano goes down for a second time. Misses the lariat. What a kick. Right to the jaw. Into the cover again. That might do it. Might have been a knockout. But Gargano survives. This very well may be a test of endurance. Who wants it more? Who wants to make it to the quarterfinals of the Cruiserweight Classic? Tozawa heading back to the top. Gargano making sure Tozawa isn't going to have a chance to hit that senton. Johnny Wrestling a little slow to capitalize. It might have cost him. Another Saido by Akira Tozawa. Momentum building maneuver. Tozawa all kinds of fired up. And looking to inflict some more damage on the whole shebang. Gargano's got to be reeling in pain right now. Tozawa has controlled the last couple of minutes, but there's another reversal by Gargano. Can he capitalize? Nice head scissors take down. Johnny Wrestler's got to get going. He's got to get the fire brewing. Get the momentum back on his side. A left. Akira Tozawa with the counter. And now Tozawa. Stop with the momentum before it gets going. Brain buster. Gargano goes down. And back to the top. Going for the set top, but again, nobody home. Gargano with the drop kick. Tozawa still on his feet. Discus Lariat. Tozawa finally goes down. Gargano. Wait a minute. Springboard. Cover. To move on to the quarterfinals. Not just yet. Akira Tozawa somehow finds a way to get the shoulder off the canvas. Who is going to move on to the quarterfinals of the Cruiserweight Classic? Gargano's wheels are spinning. Tozawa on spaghetti legs. He's going to get the final blow here. Tozawa takes Gargano down. Back and forth. The momentum starts to swing in this match. Gargano take it to a knee and a second. Shining Wizard. Tozawa's going to move on. No. Gargano at the last second. 
popping the shoulder up. And Tozawa again, crash and burn. Poison Rana by Gargano. Here we freaking go in the Cruiserweight Classic. Drop to a hold, Gargano. Looking for the Gargano escape. Dead center of the canvas. If Tozawa taps, he's going home. Gargano looking to punch his ticket to the quarterfinals finals here. Tozawa's holding on. Tozawa wants this more than life itself. I don't know if Gargano's got the strength to keep this hold locked in. It takes just as much out of him as it does the opponent. Oh, Tozawa's fighting. Tozawa breaks. How did Tozawa survive? And Gargano now. Oh, look at this. Stacking Tozawa up. Pinfall. He got him. Gargano got him. Johnny Gargano finds a way to win tonight. Well, that was one hell of a matchup to kick things off in the Cruiserweight Classic. Hats off to Akira Tozawa. He gave it all he had, but tonight belongs to the whole shebang, to Johnny Wrestling. Johnny Gargano will see the quarterfinals in this beautiful tournament. Here is your winner, Johnny Gargano. Johnny Gargano finds a way to win. An awesome matchup, nothing to be ashamed of out of Tozawa, but he's the first casualty of the 16 that came to the dance. Johnny Gargano will see his name move on to the quarterfinals, and he will meet the winner of tonight's main event, Dominic Ray, the father-son collision in the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic. It's coming up next here at Hammerstein Ballroom. It's main event time from Hammerstein Ballroom. The Cruiserweight Classic continues. The winner meets Johnny Gargano in the quarterfinals. What a match this is going to be from NYC. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from San Diego, California. Weighing in at 200 pounds. Dominic Mysterio. Tonight is without a shadow of a doubt, the biggest opportunity of young Dominic Mysterio's career. Tonight is a chance for Dominic to step out of the shadow of his father, to defeat his father, Rey Mysterio, in the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic, move forward in this tournament, send his father home, and let the spotlight be on himself. Dominic with the utmost respect, for the man who will stand across the ring with him tonight, his father, Rey Mysterio. They've held tag team championship gold. They've fought war side by side. But tonight, it's about one man, Dominic Mysterio. Can he get past his father, step out of his shadows, or is tonight gonna be a night where Rey Mysterio teaches yet another lesson to his son? Respect is there, but as we always say, respect goes out the window when that bell sounds. How are things gonna transpire in this family meeting tonight? Dominic is set, and here comes the master of the 6-1-9. Rey Mysterio has had battles in this building in the past. He returns to Hammerstein with one of the most legendary collisions I'm sure that man could possibly ever dream of. And his opponent from San Diego, California, weighing in at 100. 75 pounds, Rey Mysterio! You saw the graphic prior to these two men making their way down the aisle. Rey Mysterio, a WWE Hall of Famer. He's done everything there is to do in this business. But the fire inside of Rey that keeps him pushing forward each and every time is why Rey Mysterio is still here. Rey Mysterio loves this business, and he especially loves the Cruiserweight division. Ray is back in this division that he has helped make famous. Standing across from his son, the father and son collision in the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic, and Dominic's coming out hot. We said respect is there, but respect goes out the window when the bell sounds, and Dominic's looking to make his name famous on his father's behalf. The winner will meet Johnny Gargano, who moments ago defeated Akira Tozawa. 
This tournament continues next week for the next eight weeks. Thank you for joining us thus far tonight in Hammerstein Ballroom. We'll be live each and every Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern time. And Rey Mysterio looking to teach his son a lesson tonight that he certainly won't soon forget. Nice reversal by Dom. He came out of the gate swinging early. Mysterio dropped down, leapfrog. Beautiful arm drag. Dominic Mysterio knows everything he knows from his father. Ray has taught everything Dominic knows, but has he taught him everything Ray Mysterio knows is the question. Mysterio's hands getting locked up, no defense there. Now Dominic taking a page out of his father's book. Beautiful maneuver. Off the springboard and down goes Ray. No love lost between these two men. They'll shake hands and hug it out when the bell sounds again, but tonight is about the Cruiserweight Classic. Two men with the utmost respect for this business, for the utmost respect for the competition that takes place between those ropes. Dominic Mysterio so far has got Rey Mysterio down and out. Dominic has seized the opportunity at hand tonight. Wants to step out from his father's shadows. This is his really first Big opportunity on his own here in the WWE. Springboard, cross body, into the cover. And Mysterio gets the shoulder up. And Dominic better keep his head on straight. He's gotta know his father better than anybody. He's gotta know that his father is known as the biggest little man in WWE history. And that's for a reason. It's not about the size of the dog in the fight. It's about the size of the heart in the dog. That is what Rey Mysterio has made famous throughout his career. Dominic better stay focused. Nice reversal by Rey. He's gotta get back into this matchup. Nice drop kick. I'm sure there was a conversation between these two men before they stepped through that curtain about anything that takes place between the ropes stays between the ropes. Mysterio off the moonsault. Only a one count. Dominic Mysterio feeling what so many have felt on his father's behalf right now. That's Rey Mysterio, one of the toughest fighters you will find inside of the squared circle. And Dominic, nice reversal. Finds Rey down in the corner again. Hey, what a great and physical contest thus far between the father and son and Mysterio off the DDT. Immediately into the cover and only a one count. Dominic is unintentionally, really, you know, by default, has his, the respect of his father, but I think he wants to earn it in his own way tonight. And right to the outside, me and his son at ringside delivers the crossbody. Nobody does it better than the Hall of Famer. Right off the apron here, nice head scissors. Mysterio starting to get going in this matchup, starting to take things to the air, doing what he does best. Rey Mysterio coming off a really an awesome rivalry with Santos Escobar in the first half of this year that concluded back in June in that extreme Lucha Rules match, two out of three falls. Mysterio now has a chance to get another championship match if he can win the Cruiserweight Classic. What a maneuver! Out of the ring into a tornado DDT. Rey Mysterio came to freaking play here in Hammerstein. And Dominic is on spaghetti legs. He does not know what hit him right now. Mysterio trying to catch his breath. Dominic on his tail, but Rey Mysterio watching his son, but there's a nice counter. Dominic's got to get back into this. That was a great sprint by Rey. And Dominic felt it firsthand. Again, off the ropes. And a nice bulldog there by Dominic. Rose line, Dominic Mysterio. Starting to feel it. Nice reversal. Dominic Mysterio now turning the tides. And going for the cover. I don't know if that's going to be it. Dominic can't underestimate his father here tonight. He's got to be willing to go the extra mile. Oh, wait a minute. Mysterio off the reversal. He's going to catch his son. Similar to how Gargano caught his owl moments ago. But Dominic able to get the shoulder off the canvas. Another reversal on a move. Or excuse me, a drop kick face first to Ray. Yeah, what a matchup this has been here in the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic. 
Rey Mysterio returning to Hammerstein Ballroom. He's had battles in this very building in the past. 2005, tearing up with psychosis. 2006, tearing down the house with the homicidal, suicidal, death-nifying Sabu. And now tonight, with Dominic Mysterio. Dominic went to the well with that crossbody. Ray had it scouted. Now Ray's got a son on the top. What has he got in mind? Oh, what a maneuver! Into the cover as well. Will that do it? Not just yet. Close call. In Manhattan, New York. You're going to be hearing this loud and raucous crowd for the next eight weeks. They are loving what they're seeing out of Ray and Dominic right now. And Mysterio looking for the acai moon salt to the outside. This is what the Cruiserweight Classic is all about. The best athletes at 205 pounds and under, leaving everything inside and outside of that squared circle. We're not going to have a voice by the end of this weekend. SummerSlam tomorrow, the Cruiserweight Classic tearing down the house this afternoon. And now Rey Mysterio back inside of the ring. DDT on Dominic into the cover. A little bit of an elevation on that delivery as well, but only a one count there. A testament to the toughness of this young kid. And Ray looking to keep the offense going. So reason Mysterio finds his name in the WWE Hall of Fame. He has beaten some of the best. He has been in the ring with some of the best. He has accomplished everything there is to do. Royal Rumble match winner. WWE Champion, World Champion, all the runs with the Cruiserweight title that Rey Mysterio now eyes to win again. Dominic brought to his feet by hands of his father. But Dominic counters out a nice drop kick to the rib cage. Dominic better get things going. Rey Mysterio really turned up the volume. Now Rey's on the outside. Dominic this time to pick and hero over the top rope. It's Dominic now, flipping the side of the coin, taking things to the air, and face first, goes Ray at ringside. Dominic Mysterio changes the trajectory of this match. And giving that same fight to his father that his father gave to him. Nice neck breaker on the outside, Dominic Mysterio, oh man, he's starting to come on glue. Dominic, there's love behind all of those shots. But at the end of the day, he wants the opportunity. He wants to move on in the Cruiserweight Classic. Dominic wants to step out of his father's shadows and tonight is the chance to do it. Dominic's gotta get things back inside the squared circle though. Dominic's back inside, Rey Mysterio, count of eight. And Dominic on his tail. Rey gonna play a game of cat and mouse with his son at the moment. Dominic might have got caught. Mysterio with the takedown. Mysterio hits the ropes. Nice drop kick. And now Ray, springboard, splitting the difference. Bulldog. Down goes Dominic. Oh, but the young kid's got, he's got fight. But Mysterio brings him back down to size. And now Ray, dial it up to six, one, nine. Dominic is out cold by hands, or shall I say by the boots of his father, but Dominic gets the shoulder up. Holy hell, what a matchup. Dominic surviving the 619, a maneuver that his father has taught him to utilize, but Ray dishing it to his son tonight. However, Dominic survives and the matchup continues. Dominic's gotta be feeling it. It's one thing to kick out. It's another thing to thrive off the survival. I don't know how much Dominic's got left in the tank, but there's a reversal. Don't count out the young kid from the Mysterio family. Gotta wonder how Dominic's whereabouts are right now after being dealt that 619. Not a fun hand to receive. Mysterio off the reversal again. Dominic in the corner. Rey Mysterio looking to teach his son a lesson he won't soon forget tonight. You want to come to the dance, you better come to play. And Dominic is feeling it firsthand. Once again, the winner of this matchup will meet Johnny Gargano in just a few weeks in the quarterfinals of the Cruiserweight Classic. 
Dominic back up on the top rope. Rey Mysterio again going back to the well with what works. But elects not to go for the pinfall that time. Interesting decision by Rey. However, Dominic's on the outside and Rey is up where he feels most comfortable. Seated senton from high in the sky. Dominic Mysterio. The young man may be seeing stars right now, and that's not just because his father is standing across from him. Ray into the cover, dead center of the ring. That's got to do it. All the offense is tallied up, but Dominic's heart is still pumping. If Dominic take away the default respect that a father has for his son, if that was not there, Dominic is certainly earning the respect of Ray Mysterio tonight. Off the reversal, Dominic's got to get things going. And there's another maneuver that I'm sure his father taught him oh so well. Nice takedown. Oh, and a stiff shot. Reminding Rey Mysterio that this is about the fight. This is about the Cruiserweight Classic. Rey's down and out. Dominic Mysterio scaling the ropes. Oh my goodness, front splash! Into the cover. That's gonna do it. No, Rey Mysterio kicks out. You gotta be kidding me. Rey Mysterio's not done. Blood's still pumping in the veins. But Dominic. Oh my God, the irony. A 619 to Rey Mysterio. Back up top. Dominic's going. From the heavens. Frog splash cover. Dominic Mysterio with a career performance here in the Hammerstein Ballroom. What a physical matchup between Ray and Dom, but only one man could leave tonight the victor. In this first time ever father and son collision, Dominic Mysterio earns the respect of not only Ray, Here's but the winner, world. Dominic. Well, our first quarterfinal matchup is officially set. Dominic Mysterio sends his father home packing. And Dominic will meet Johnny Gargano in the quarterfinals of the Cruiserweight Classic. After no mercy is shown and a queen is crowned, the bad blood will boil over. Coming your way live on Saturday night, October 19th, from the TD Garden in Boston, Massachusetts. Witness the unforgiving, high octane, and high stakes action as Raw, SmackDown, and No Nation Gaming channel memberships proudly present WWE Bad Blood. Things off here in Hammerstein Ballroom, Manhattan, New York, with week two of eight in this oh so awesome tournament. And here comes competitor number one, representing Friday Night SmackDown. Mustafa Ali, tag team member with Ricochet over the last few months, but tonight steps into a singles opportunity here in NYC. The following is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring. From Chicago, Illinois, weighing in at 182 pounds, Mustafa Ali! Speaking on that tag team with Ricochet, Ali and Ricochet really took the division by storm in 2023, winning the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic as well as the WWE World Tag Team Championship back in WrestleMania weekend in February. Ever since they lost the gold back in June, though, it's been a little bit of a rocky road for both men individually. Ali, we saw him in a Money in the Bank qualifying match dating back to June, unfortunately slipped through the fingers of Ali. He's been chomping at the bit for another opportunity. Tonight, he finds himself back where it all began in the Cruiserweight Classic, and I'm sure Ali would love to not only win this oh-so-prestigious tournament, but to earn a future opportunity at the WWE Cruiserweight Championship of the World. 
but so would this man who, as we mentioned, is a former one-time Cruiserweight Champion and one half of Los Lotharios, Angel Gorza, owns a recent victory over Ali a few months ago on the blue brand. How will that play into the strategies of both men as they meet in the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic? And his opponent, representing Los Lotharios from Monterey, Mexico, weighing in at 205 pounds. Angel! And you know, not only did Angel Garza pick up a victory over Mustafa Ali a couple of months ago on SmackDown, but it was a extremely physical match. Could have went either way, but in the end, Garza just had the number of Mustafa Ali. And you remember what that led to? Los Lotharios battled Ali and Ricochet just a few weeks later on Friday Night SmackDown for the World Tag Team titles. Obviously, Los Lotharios coming up short. But Angel Garza, I'm sure, has kept that victory inside of his mind heading into this tournament. He knows what it takes to beat Mustafa Ali. And as for Ali on the flip side of the coin, he knows he has lost to Angel Garza the last time they went one-on-one. -on -one. Gotta wonder if that'll play into the psyche of Ali tonight. Will it play into the strategy of either men as we kick off week two here in Manhattan, New York, Cruiserweight Classic first round battle between the heart and soul of Friday Night SmackDown and Mustafa Ali and a one half of Los Lotharios, Angel Garza. Of course, the other half of Los Lotharios and Humberto Carrillo will battle Ali's recent tag team partner in Ricochet coming up soon here in the Cruiserweight Classic as well. But tonight, the opposing members of those teams meet as Angel Garza hot out of the gate, taking Ali down and the springboard missile drop kick on Mustafa. Angel Garza coming out hot. And I bet, as we mentioned, that victory a few months back is really dating into that strategy tonight. Angel trying to not only play into the mindset of Ali, but trying to catch him off guard in the early going. Angel Garza's got all the tools to be a champion. He's done it before. He can do it again. Angel. There's a nice reversal by Humberto, or excuse me, by Mustafa Ali. Humberto Carrillo, as we mentioned, will be in action coming up soon here in the Cruiserweight Classic against the one and only Ricochet in the first round. Angel, so far, is all over the opponent tonight. Ali yet to get an offensive maneuver in on his opposer. And of course, still to come tonight here in the Hammerstein Ballroom, Nathan Frazier from NXT, former Heritage Cup winner, challenges a former NXT Tag Team Champion in Wesley. Should be an amazing matchup, certainly. One of the biggest matches of both men's careers later tonight. As Angel goes for the early victory over Ali, and Ali having none of it. Whether he kicked out or not, so far, Angel Garza all over Mustafa. Springboard and another drop kick. Ali is rocked right now. Angel Garza is looking to pick the bones of Mustafa Ali, who may be crumbling under the moment before our very eyes. Ali's got to get back into this thing. There you go. Grabbing a hold of Angel, trying to slow him down and brings him down to the canvas with the neck breaker followed by the elbow. Very interesting the words I just started trying to slow down Angel Garzo and really one of the strong suits of both of these men is the fast pace high offense that we are seeing right there by Ali swinging neck breaker only a one count and you got to believe Ali knew he wasn't going to get the victory there so early in this matchup they're just trying to gain the momentum back and maybe get into the psyche of Angel that this isn't going to be such an easy victory tonight. Over the top rope of the crossbody and down to the floor of Manhattan, New York. Ali sends an Angel back inside the squared circle looking to pick the bones of one half of Los Lotharios here. As Ali, beautiful tornado DDT. One of Ali's best maneuvers in the playbook, but it's not enough to keep Angel down. You gotta believe damage certainly done, however. Angel Garza was all over Ali after the opening bell, but Ali's starting to flip the script. Angel Garza not looking to go down without a fight tonight, looking to play in to the psyche of Ali. He knows Ali has been thinking about that loss all those months ago, leading into this rematch here tonight in the midst of the Cruiserweight Classic, and stakes higher than ever. First round, single elimination tournament. Win, you move on, lose, you go home. And so much on the line. Again, not only is the Cruiserweight Classic at stake, but as Ali eats the knees, both of these men got to be thinking about a future Cruiserweight Championship opportunity. And Gars over the top rope. Pedal to the metal since the opening bell. This is what the Cruiserweight Classic is all about. 
I think both of these men had a can of that C4 before they came out here. Now Ali trying to avoid whatever Angel had in mind, and whether he meant to or not, Angel Garza eats the ring post. Now it's Ali on the tail of his opposer and a crossbody from the heavens. And Mustafa Ali now once again flipping the script on the other half of Los Lotharios. Awesome opening matchup so far. Remember, the winner of this match will meet the winner of tonight's main event between Wesley and Nathan Frazier in the quarterfinals of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Dominic Mysterio, Johnny Gargano, the other quarterfinal matchup that has been signed thus far. And still two more weeks of first round battles to come here in Hammerstein. One of the most wrestling, fa fa most famous venues, I should say, in wrestling history. And Ali is looking at Mace Hicks during tonight in the midst of this incredible building, but not able to defeat Garza just yet. Nice counter, however. Looked like Angel Garza might have been going for a powerbomb there to no avail, but the German suplex works out in his favor. And Ali ate the canvas hard. And Angel trying to keep on the offense. And down goes Ali. Mustafa Ali has shown signs of life in this match. But I got to say, Angel Garza looks to be the favorite. I think it's had the offense for the majority of this match. And that V-triggered knee might have just knocked Ali out. He might be seeing stars. And you notice Angel Garza not letting up for a moment in this matchup. He has been all over Mustafa since the opening bell. Any window of opportunity, he has taken it. And you got to give it up to Angel Garza for looking to seize this opportunity tonight. Going for the basement dropkick, a signature in the arsenal of Garza. And he lands it flush. That's going to do it. Garza's moving on. Not just yet as Mustafa Ali survives. Close call there by Ali. And now on the ropes. But there's a reversal. Angel Garza eats the knee. And Ali going to make him pay for it. Face first off the canvas. What a reversal. What a series of maneuvers. But it's not enough to keep Angel Garza down for the three. Incredible counter by Mustafa. Threw the ropes down to the floor. But Angel Garza able to survive. Business pick it up in your opening matchup tonight in Manhattan, New York, as Angel scares, or I should say, Ali scales the ropes and gonna bring Angel down with him off the Frankensteiner. To the outside, but if we want to know one thing about the Cruiserweight Classic, is the outside is no safe place to be as Mustafa Ali up and over the top rope, but he may have hurt his tailbone on the landing. Whether he hurt himself or not, took Angel Garza out. That's why they call it high risk, high reward. Might injure yourself in the process, but nonetheless, Angel Garza back on his feet, Ali on his tail, but Angel Garza trying to avoid it. Now these men playing a game of cat and mouse. The speed of the cruiserweights as Ali gets the best of them. Big time drop kick there. Garza just trying to get his whereabouts right now. Ali turned the script on him a few minutes ago off that counter, that X factor inside the squared circle. And although he's surviving, Angel certainly not thriving. Sit out power bomb. There's the two, not a three, as Garza survives again. Angel, that tank must be running on A. Able to get the shoulder up to how much is left in this half of Los Lotharios. Especially when it, Angel Garza came out Hot so early in this matchup. He may have outdid himself. Angel Garza down and out. Ali with the splash into the cover. And again, the kick out. But fatigue is setting in for Angel. Ali not able to put the opposer away yet. The matchup rolls on. And finally, a reversal there out of Angel Garza. Kick to the gut. And there's another maneuver to crush the tailbone of Ali that he may have injured a few minutes ago. And these notice, the submission hold in. Angel could have easily let up. The maneuver was done, but Angel elects for the submission. And if Ali gives up, Garza's got a first class ticket to the quarterfinals. But Ali not going down without a Pier 6 brawl tonight. Ali goes behind, takes out Angel Garza again. Man, what is it going to take at some point again? Fatigue starts to set in. The tank's got to be running on E. It's such a physical, high pace, high reward matchup. 
but neither man will get to see this opportunity slip through their grasp tonight. Angel down, Ali. Could be going for an O. A five and a four, but Garza rolls out of the way. Nobody home off the 0-5-4, and Mustafa Ali, with such a critical maneuver, misses, and Angel Garza now looking to take full advantage. Already such a difficult maneuver to land, a difficult maneuver to pull off, and for it not to work out for Mustafa Ali may be his biggest detriment in this matchup as Garza from the top, but not able to hit the maneuver he was searching for. And now Ali, off the reversal. Nice Frank insider and take Garza off his feet. Goes for the senton, nobody home. Back and forth, the pendulum momentum swings in this match. Moon Salt, nobody home. Angel now. Fighting an uphill battle. Ali Springboard goes for the Tornado DDT again, but there's nobody home. Angel Gorza starting to unload. Mustafa Ali taking a couple of blows. Inside out, face first on the canvas. Angel Gorza might have just caught the opponent here tonight. And that he did. What a victory. Well, dare I say it may be an upset. Angel Gorza, we talked about it to the fullest tonight, has defeated Mustafa Ali before, but under these bright lights, I don't think anybody Here's saw it winner, coming. Angel. Nonetheless, Mustafa Ali getting the boot in the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic, and Los Lothario's Angel Garza picking up a monumental victory in his career, one step closer to becoming a two-time Cruiserweight Champion. Cannot believe that. Now going two for two over Ali over these last few months, but tonight, a victory that'll sit with Garza for the long, long time. It is main event time here in the Hammerstein Ballroom, Manhattan, New York, as the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic continues, and quite possibly the biggest match of this young man's career. The former Heritage Cup winner, Nathan Frazier is live and in living color in New York City for the Cruiserweight Classic. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring from Jersey in the Channel Islands, weighing in at 182 pounds, Nathan Frazier. From the United Kingdom all the way to New York City, Nathan Frazier has been fighting an uphill underdog battle his whole career. But a man who is trained by none other than the current WWE Champion, Seth Freakin' Rollins, looking to showcase his talents in the middle of the Mecca tonight. Phenomenal theme music as well. Nonetheless, Nathan Frazier is live here in Hammerstein, but a big time opponent ahead. A man who has fought in and out of NXT, now a part of Friday Night SmackDown over the last year. Former NXT Tag Team Champion, the young, hungry, and exciting Wesley. And his opponent from Dayton, Ohio, weighing in at 183 pounds, Wesley. You know, we're going to talk about Nathan Frazier, United Kingdom, all the way to USA. Wesley is also hold championship gold all throughout the world. You're looking at a man who has held championships all over the independence from Pro Wrestling Gorilla, former Super X Cup champion in Impact Wrestling, and of course, as we mentioned, a former NXT Tag Team Champion. But no doubt, Wesley and Nathan Frazier find themselves under the spotlight tonight in a matchup that quite possibly could steal the whole first round and possibly steal this entire 16-man tournament. But here we go. First round matchup in the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. NXT's Nathan Frazier, Friday Night SmackDown's Wes Lee. Who is gonna meet Angel Garza in the quarterfinals in a couple of weeks time? The bell has sounded and we are underway. Nathan Frazier looking to come out hot here. Taking a page out of Angel Garza's book who was all over Mustafa Ali in the early going of the previous matchup and clearly worked out to his advantage. Let's see who's got the more endurance between Frazier and Wesley tonight. Who's gonna go the distance, outlast the other? Who's gonna throw caution in the wind for the will to succeed tonight? Right now, Nathan Frazier all over Wesley. Frazier realizes that his journey has led him to the biggest match of his career tonight. An opportunity to take 
things to the next step here in the WWE. Possibly solidify himself a permanent spot on either Raw or SmackDown. Could start here tonight. So far, so good as he has got Wesley down and out. But does he have him out for good is the question. We have seen Wesley have some championship opportunities of his own over the last year since debuting a part of the main roster. A couple of opportunities to become Cruiserweight champion, even fought Gunther for the United States title a few months back. Unfortunately, none of those opportunities going Wesley's way, but will tonight be a different story? And now Lee on the outside. Nathan Frazier over the top rope. Phenomenal maneuver. You see how he cradled himself up midair and came out of the top like a cannonball to explode Wesley at wing side. And a shooting star press for good measures. Nathan Frazier leaving it all on the table tonight. Wesley has got no answer. Ever since that opening bell, Frazier has been the aggressor. And there's a discus. Forearm to the back of the neck. Very similar to Nathan Frazier's former mentor, Seth freaking Rollins, the current WWE champion. Certainly a, certainly a man to learn all your tricks from. And Frazier off the top. Dropping the elbow. And finally goes for the cover. And I gotta believe Nathan Frazier might have Wes Lee here in the early moments, but Lee gets the shoulder off. Wes Lee has not gotten one offensive maneuver in. This is very much a parallel of the matchup we just saw between Angel Garza and Mustafa Ali. But will Wes Lee be able to turn the tides and get back into this matchup and possibly outlast the onslaught of Frazier? really comes down to who wants it more, who's got the endurance, who is going to punch their ticket to the quarterfinals of the Cruiserweight Classic. Finally, a counter by Lee. And in Siguri, making a dose. And Frazier goes down. And what a maneuver by Lee. Wes Lee trying to get things going. As we mentioned, world traveled superstar inside of that ring. And still very young in his career. But he's won tournaments in the past. He's won championships all around the globe, but looking to do the same here in WWE, and it could start here tonight for Wesley. Nathan Fraser on spaghetti legs. Lee was looking for that possibly overhead kick. Fraser avoided it, goes for a moonsault, but now Wesley gets out of the way. And what a forearm. A little bit of oomph behind it as well for the shot and a pump kick and Lee might have just punched his ticket to the next round but only a one count and everybody in this tournament over the last few two weeks so far given everything they got leaving their heart and soul inside the squared circle as we talked about earlier tonight it is single elimination win move on lose you go home and nobody wants to be on their way out of Manhattan New York Nathan Fraser, that was a beautiful missile drop kick off the springboard, heads to the top. West Lee catches him, however. Great strength by Lee. And now hanging Fraser up on the top silver rope. Nice counter by Lee there, able to avoid disaster. A beautiful maneuver. West Lee, so unique inside of that ring. Lee has one of those arsenals that's so unpredictable. But that Tope Suicida, Nathan Frazier, could have saw coming from a mile away, but not fast enough to avoid it. Wesley shot like a rocket out of that ring, and now up on the apron. And a meteor takes down Frazier. Wesley is throwing a little bit of everything, a little spice here and there in this matchup to throw Frazier off his game and ultimately, hopefully, get the victory. Frazier's down, but Wesley not going for the pinfall just yet. He recognizes the heart of this young kid, and he's looking for the victory in any way means necessary tonight. Off the ropes. Tilt to whirl, head scissors, down goes the opposer. And now into the cover. And the two, but Nathan Frazier kicks out. Game recognizes game, and Wesley realizes what he's in the ring with right now. Someone just as young and just as hungry as he is, but who is going to be the one to grab the brass ring? Beautiful regal plex by Wesley, but not enough to keep Fraser down. And now a reversal by Nathan Fraser. Can he get back into this match? Shooting Lee into the ropes. 
And just taking Wesley out. Nice takedown there. Into the cover. And only another kick out. And this match has been pedaled to the metal since the opening bell, as we would expect nothing less. Wesley on the outside, and Nathan Frazier, his wheels are spinning again, could be looking to go back to the well with what has worked so far in this matchup, and that's taking things high in the sky. And as this matchup continues, remember next week, Saturday afternoon, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, week three of the Cruiserweight Classic, Monday Night Raw's Tyler Bate will battle Friday Night SmackDown's Drew Gulak, and then the other matchup, one half of Los Lothario's Humberto Carrillo set to take on the human highlight reel, Ricochet. Both those matches coming your way next Saturday afternoon in the midst of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. We'll see who moves on to the quarterfinals next week, but who is going to move on tonight between Lee and Frazier as Lee once again avoids a high-risk, possibly dangerous maneuver out of Frazier's arsenal. Now look at this beautiful offense by Wesley. The strikes, the lefts, the rights, the knee. He's got to take advantage, but there's Nathan Frazier. Nice drop kick there on Lee. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Frazier stuck between a rock and the hard place in the corner and just went to the well with that drop kick and it worked for him. But now heading to the top rope, Lee is down. Could be looking for that picture perfect Phoenix splash by Nathan Frazier into the cover. And he got him! Nathan Frazier picking up the biggest win of his young career without a shadow of it out. And we now know the next matchup in the quarterfinals, Nathan Frazier will meet one half of Los Lotharios, Angel Gorza, in a number of weeks here in Hammerstein. Here's your winner, Nathan Frazier. An awesome matchup here tonight in Manhattan, New York, but only one man can punch their ticket to the next round, and that man will be the young Nathan Frazier. It'll be a battle between the United Kingdom and Mexico coming up in a few weeks here in New York City. Awesome matchups here tonight. A part of the Cruiserweight Classic, Nathan Frazier picking up a huge win, but remember, coming your way next week, Drew Gulak versus Tyler Bate, plus Humberto Carrillo takes on the human highlight reel ricochet. Both first round matches coming your way at 3 p.m. Eastern time next Saturday afternoon. Another great week in the books of the Cruiserweight Classic. Thank you for joining us from Manhattan, New York, and we will see you next week live from Hammerstein Ballroom. Can't get enough universe mode? Well, now is your chance to secure a backstage pass to more universe than ever before. Become a Noination Gaming Channel member and gain entry into monthly house shows that directly affect your episodic viewing of universe mode. Also, take a peek behind the curtain with behind the scenes updates, exclusive content to see how universe mode is brought to life each and every week. Hit the join button down below, become a Backstage Pass channel member, and get your front row seat to more universe than ever before. It's a better time than any to become a No Nation Gaming channel member. Saturday night, October the 12th. Saturday night, October the 26th. Witness the exclusive Halloween Havoc events. Hit the join button down below or the link up in the cards. Become a No Nation Gaming channel member today and don't miss out on Halloween Havoc. First round of the CWC continues. Who is going to move on to the quarterfinals in just a number of weeks? The big strong boy waltzes down the aisle here in Manhattan. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Dudley, England, weighing in at 175 pounds, Tyler Bay. Well, Tyler Bay unfortunately rolling into this matchup tonight with a little bit of less momentum than he would have liked. Remember two weeks ago on Monday Night Raw, Bate teamed up with the other Monday Night Raw participant in the CWC, that being Ilya Dragunov, who will participate next week. And the two men took on the brawling brutes, Butch and Ridge Holland, but unfortunately for Bate and Dragunov, victory was not to be. The brawling brutes picked up the win on that night. But Tyler Bate, however, waltzing into a tournament tonight. And remember back, back in the early spring when Tyler Bate participated in the King of the Ring tournament. 
He made it to the quarterfinals of that tournament. Gotta wonder if Tyler Bate is gonna have lightning strike twice tonight. But will he be able to get through the submission specialist, a brawler, a grappler, in Drew Gulak, a man who was introduced to the WWE in the original Cruiserweight Classic back in 2016. Tyler Bate looks locked and loaded, ready to go. But here comes the man all the way from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And his opponent from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, weighing in at 193 pounds, Drew Gulak. Well, Drew Gulak's fighting out of a place that has a very fight or die attitude. And Drew Gulak not opposed to any fight at any time, but tonight the fight bigger than he could have possibly imagined. The first round of the Cruiserweight Classic. And as we've been discussing for weeks, remember what is on the line in this tournament. Not only the right to call yourself the winner of the 2023 CWC, but also to earn a future opportunity at the WWE Cruiserweight Championship that of course will be defended on September the 16th at No Mercy as the current champion Santos Escobar puts the gold on the line against Alpha Academy's Chad Gable. But here we go, kicking things off this afternoon in Manhattan, New York, Drew Gulak, the big strong boy, Tyler Bate. The bell has sounded and we are underway with the next first round matchup in the CWC. And Drew Gulak hot off the gate with the powerbomb. They call Tyler Bate the big strong boy, but Drew Gulak very versatile inside of that squared circle. Already said it this evening, but he is a submission specialist from bell to bell, no doubt about it, former amateur wrestler. Drew Gulak loves to take things to the mat. Also has that brawling instinct. I think that comes from that Philadelphia background where Gulak grew up, where he learned to fight inside of the ring. Drew Gulak, a little bit of power in his offense as well, but Tyler Bate, certainly the more agile of the two in this contest, as he showcases right there off the shooting star, but only a one count. It's a great matchup here. Great pairing, stylistic pairing in the first round of the CWC. Again, Tyler Bate representing Monday Night Raw, Drew Gulak representing Friday Night SmackDown. Of course, brand supremacy, not necessarily what is at stake in this tournament, but I'm sure a little bit, a little bit of bragging rights will always be there. As Drew, Drew Gulak hits that lariat to the back of Tyler Bate, knocking him off his boots. Drew Gulak again, so versatile inside of that ring. Tyler Bate better have done his homework on this former Cruiserweight champion coming into the tournament tonight. Tyler Bate has held gold here in WWE before, as you just saw in the graphic a few moments ago. The first ever NXT United Kingdom champion, former NXT Tag Team champion as well. And Tyler Bate, a man who's really taken the main roster by storm over this last year and change. We've seen him on SmackDown, we have seen him on Raw. He's had a few opportunities to capitalize on championship gold. Unfortunately have not gone Tyler Bates' way. But every opportunity, a chance to change your momentum here in WWE. And that's what Tyler Bates is looking to do this afternoon. Oh man, what a maneuver! Tyler Bates, halfway across the ring, delivers the uppercut to Gulak. Drew Gulak goes down, only a one count. But credit where it's due, Tyler Bate came to play. And what an exploder! Down goes Gulak, and Tyler Bate is getting fired up in the middle of Hammerstein. And Drew Gulak, sense of urgency now, springing to his feet, and drops Tyler Bate with a simple yet effective elbow. It's the brawling instinct coming out of Drew Gulak here tonight. A nice snap suplex. Gulak not afraid to keep things simple yet effective. It's one of the tools that have made Gulak so successful throughout his career. A veteran of the ring, world travel, has held championships all across the goal. Do your homework. Drew Gulak has been around and he's made some waves in the WWE in the past, but can tonight be the night that takes Drew Gulak to prominence once again in the Cruiserweight division? Tyler Bay trying to get back into this. Gulak having none of it in a simple big boot, but yes, again, effective. Now Gulak sent him bait into the ropes. Tyler had it scouted, however. Drew Gulak now could be going for a little gut wrench power bomb, and down goes Bait again. As the power instinct of Drew coming out as we discussed earlier. Tyler Bate down and out. Drew Gulak starting to control this matchup. Wrestle his style of matchup. 
As Gulak charges at bait, there's a counter. Big time German on the outside of the ring. What a counter by the big strong boy. That is certainly a way to change the tide to the matchup. Gulak back inside the ring. Tyler Bate on the apron. Bate not able to capitalize. And now Gulak on his tail. Oh no. And on the apron goes the spine of Tyler Bate. Drew Gulak making him pay for his sins tonight in Manhattan, New York. Drew Gulak wants the gold, wants the opportunity, wants to advance to the quarterfinals of the CWC in just a few weeks. This is week three of a 16-man, eight-week tournament. Four casualties so far. Four men have moved on to the quarterfinals. The second half of the bracket is beginning right here tonight. Who is going to meet Dominic Mysterio, Johnny Gargano, Angel Garza, Nathan Fraser on the other side. And Drew Gulak going to the sky, not usually in his arsenal, but not afraid to throw caution in the wind tonight in the means of success. Dropping that elbow on the spine of Tyler Bate that he already dropped on the apron a few moments ago. And that's Tyler Bate on the reverse. A sense of urgency out of Tyler Bate now. Trying to get back into this matchup. You see Tyler just simply resorting to some strikes to try to take the momentum back. He's got to muster up the energy, muster up the endurance again to really kick things into high gear, possibly take things to the air. We know Tyler Bate is not afraid to do so. Gulak hoisted in the corner, and what a uppercut. Tyler Bate has delivered some mean strikes throughout this contest thus far. And a couple of uppercuts have certainly done him good. It's that UK background of the big strong boy, but there's Drew Gulak again not having none of it. Simply taking Tyler Bate down with one of the oldest tricks in the book. It never goes out of style. The suplex pays dividends for Gulak. Now Tyler Bate in the grass. Gulak's got him. All kinds are wrapped up there. And another exploder variation into the cover. And that may do it. But Tyler Bate gets the shoulder up. Gulak almost had him. Awesome maneuver there by an awesome talent in Drew Gulak. And now going for the Dragon Sleeper. Gulak has won championships all around the globe with this very submission hold. And it may be the maneuver that punches his ticket to the quarterfinals tonight. Tyler Bates got to hold on. He's close to the ropes, but not really in the position to reach out and grab him. Does Bate have the endurance to get out of this? A oh, nice counter there, nice counter. Rolled out of it, used his momentum to shift the weight and roll out of the Dragon Sleeper. And now sends Gulak over the top rope. A sense of urgency in the big strong boy. Wait a minute. Tope Suicida through the ropes. Shot out like a cannon is Tyler Bate. And that's certainly a way to change the tides of this matchup as Gulak was really starting to inch closer to victory. That exploder, the dragon suplex. Tyler Bate took things to the sky, threw caution in the wind, and it worked out in his favor. Well, maybe only at least for a moment, as Gulak with another exploder. Tyler Bate has shown signs of life in this match, but Gulak, in my eyes, has controlled the majority. But Tyler Bate not going to stop fighting until he hears a bell. Nice takedown by the big strong boy, former NXT United Kingdom champion. Knows what it takes to win under the lights, to win under the pressure. But can he seize the moment tonight? Gulak up against the ropes. Not sure what Tyler Bates got in mind. Goes for the Irish whip. Gulak with the counter, the forearm, not watching his back. Slingshot Lariat. Amazing maneuver by Tyler Bate. And Gulak's now on spaghetti legs. And Bates gonna bring him back down to size. Looking for the reverse. Boston Crab. He has tapped out Sami Zayn to this maneuver. Dating back to the first round of King of the Ring in May. And Drew Gulak may be about to suffer the same fate. Gulak is wrenched up. I don't know from my vantage point if he's close enough to reach the ropes. But no need as Gulak picks the ankle. And now Drew trying to get things going. A couple of lariats there. And a nice takedown. Bate taking off his feet. Got to respect the game that Gulak is bringing to the dance tonight. And dropping that bare knee. The bone on Tyler Bate. 
Now Bate rolling to the outside, and wait a minute, Gulak again. We said it earlier, we will repeat ourselves, not afraid to throw caution in the wind in the means of victory, especially after he is thrown out. Some of his best maneuvers already. What a missile drop kick to Tyler Bate. And now what has Gulak got in mind? He'll be looking to wrench Tyler Bate's spine in all kinds of different directions on the outskirts of the ring. Yeah, what a match we got kicking things off tonight in Hammerstein Ballroom. First round of the Cruiserweight Classic. So far, four men have moved on to the quarterfinals. Johnny Gargano, Dominic Mysterio, Angel Garza, and Nathan Fraser. Tonight kicks off the second half of the bracket. Drew Gulak and Tyler Bate putting on an incredible performance right now. And later tonight, the other half of Los Lotharios, Humberto Carrillo, battles the human highlight, Rio Ricochet. Gulak trying to keep things on the outside. I think he wants to tap into that brawling style, but Tyler Bate not going to have none of it. And that's smart by Bate to create this distance. Try to catch a breather. And try to get back into this match, and now sends Drew Gulak over the top rope by force. Amazing strength there out of the big strong boy. And again, I like that decision making by Tyler Bate, not following Gulak to the outside. Gonna hit, gonna strike. They're going to allow Gulak to get back in the ring and wait to capitalize. It clearly works out in Tyler Bates favor as Gulak hoisted on the ropes. And look at the strength from the big strong boy. A superplex in the middle of Manhattan. Tyler Bate is starting to pick up steam. And Drew Gulak is down. But could he be out as Bate scales the ropes? Could be looking for the spiral tap. What a maneuver by Tyler Bate. Gulak's down. Will it be a three? And that'll do it. An awesome contest to kick things off. Hey, credit where credit's due. Drew Gulak gave Tyler Bate the fight of his life this afternoon. But in the end, the three count and the result will say that Tyler Bate is victorious and that the big strong boy is moving on to the quarterfinals of the 2023 Cruiser away classic tournament. What a matchup to kick things off in Manhattan, New York. Here is your winner, Tyler Bates. Awesome win for Tyler Bates. Let's take a look at the updated bracket. We now have five wrestlers moving on to the quarterfinals. Tyler Bates moves on as Drew Gulak's name fades to black. But who is going to move on to fight Tyler Bate in the quarterfinals? We will find out in mere moments here in Manhattan, New York, as the one and only Ricochet looks to contest one half of Los Lotharios and Humberto Carrillo. But right now, the moment belongs to the big, strong boy. It is main event time here in the Hammerstein Ballroom, Manhattan, New York. Another Saturday afternoon is coming and going in the midst of the Cruiserweight Classic. Humberto Carrillo, Ricochet, set to lock horns, one-on-one -on -one in the middle of the Big Apple. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring, representing Los Lotharios from Monterey, Mexico. Weighing in at 198 pounds, Humberto! The most interesting situation coming into this matchup is what happened last week. Humberto Carrillo's tag team partner, Angel Garza, picking up the victory against Ricochet's tag team partner in Mustafa Ali. That's one up for Los Lotharios. Angel Garza is on his way to the quarterfinals, but who is going to be on the other side of the bracket? Humberto Carrillo, his tag team partner, or will it be the one, the only human highlight reel of the world wrestling entertainment? Ricochet! And his opponent from Paducah, Kentucky, weighing in at 190 pounds, Ricochet! It has not been so hot of an eight days for the one and only Ricochet. Last week on SmackDown, he fell to the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes in his pursuit of the United States Championship. And just less than 24 hours ago, Ricochet was inside of the ring against the mean, 
and a hungry Braun Breaker and another unfortunate loss. And then after the bell, the Nigerian giant Omos making his way to ringside, ragdoll and ricochet from pillar to post, obviously taking issue with the fact that Ricochet defeated him a few weeks back in Sacramento on SmackDown. Gotta wonder how Ricochet's body is gonna hold up tonight and where the mental state is at for the one and only. But this is it, the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic. Go big or go home. It's a single elimination tournament. There's no going back for Humberto Carrillo and Ricochet. The bell has sounded. Who's moving on to the quarterfinals? Ricochet hot off the bell into that snap German into the bridge. Only a one. Remember what happened earlier tonight? Tyler Bate picking up the victory against Drew Gulak. He will meet the winner of this match in just a few short weeks in the quarterfinals of the CWC. And Ricochet meets the knees of Humberto Carrillo. Gotta wonder what is hurting the most of Ricochet. It's gotta be that midsection. He took a mean spear from Braun Breaker last night. Got ragdolled all around ringside by Omas. There's no way Ricochet is coming into this match 100%. Humberto... However, definitely going to be on his A game, realizing what Ricochet has been through as of this last eight days and just the last 24 hours alone. And you know Humberto is going to try to capitalize tonight. A beautiful Spanish fly in the early going from Monterey, Mexico, all the way to Manhattan, New York. Humberto Carrillo, an extremely underrated talent, as his Angel Garza, and they're looking to break out in the midst of the Cruiserweight Classic. Ricochet on the outside, Humberto heading to the top. You gotta be kidding me! Dropping the elbow on the chest, on the heart and soul of Ricochet. Humberto came to play tonight, leaving all the cards on the table. And Ricochet is feeling the brunt of it right now. Ricochet is reeling in pain, dead center of the canvas. Meanwhile, Carrillo scales the ropes and drops another elbow. And Ricochet may be down and out in the early going. Into the cover, gets the two. Not enough to get the three count, but very early on in this matchup, we are seeing Ricochet fight an uphill battle, which in my eyes is usually a rare occurrence. Ricochet has been a main player here in WWE for years, but as you just saw in the graphic a few moments ago, in the last 12 months alone, Ricochet has been the Cruiserweight Champion for over six months. One half of the Tag Team Champions, one half of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic Tournament winners earlier this year with Mustafa Ali. But as of late, things not going so hot for Ali nor Ricochet. And tonight that bad luck may continue. As Ricochet is on spaghetti legs, Humberto comes from the sky. Ricochet avoids the drop kick, and there's a punt by the one and only. And the shooting star press for good measures. Into the cover, only a one count. And even though we're just in the first few minutes of this match, that speaks volumes on how much Humberto has been in control, opposed to Ricochet, that he was only able to get the one count there. Nice missile drop kick by Ricochet. As hard as he possibly could on the landing. The tilt the world head scissors. I think Ricochet is just trying to find a way to keep Humberto down just for a moment in this match. Probably catch a breather. Trying to regroup in the middle of Manhattan, New York tonight. Ricochet staying on the offense. Hurting or not, we know one thing about the one and only and that he is going to come give this match up as he does any other match, everything he's got in the tank as he puts Humberto Carrillo. An opportune state on the top. Ricochet looking to up the ante. A Spanish fly from the top rope. Anything you can do, I can do better, says the one and only. Hammerstein Ballroom is coming unglued as Carrillo and Ricochet already tearing down the roof of this joint in the early going. Humberto on the outside. You remember we saw that Spanish fly by Humberto on the canvas a few minutes ago. Ricochet up in the ante. Spanish fly from the top rope. Neither get the victory as Ricochet takes things to the air with the corkscrew, but nobody home. And Humberto Carrillo looking to capitalize on the misstep. On the shoulders, Death Valley driver on the outskirts of the ring. And correct me if I'm wrong, you're gonna have to check back the tape, but I believe that is the same maneuver that Angel Garza 
used to the outside to Mustafa Ali last week. Los Lotharios game planning together in this match, or excuse me, in this tournament. Ricochet just trying to fight out between a rock and a hard place right now. The one and only is definitely the underdog in this matchup. Ricochet on top, Humberto gets caught! And there's a crossbody by Ricochet to the outside. Because of the, no doubt, not being 100% factor in the recent losses over the last eight days, that is why we call Ricochet the underdog tonight. Humberto has controlled the majority of this contest, but Ricochet trying to change the pace. Humberto rolling to the outside again, but if there's one thing we know about Ricochet is that there's nowhere to run and nowhere to hide up and over that top rope. The one and only putting on a showcase that only the human highlight reel can. Carrillo trying to get his whereabouts on the outside. Meanwhile, Ricochet going for the moonsault. Humberto a little out of position, and Ricochet better be thanking his lucky stars. He landed on his feet. But unfortunately, that allowed Carrillo to shake the cobwebs off. And I'll get back into this matchup. And once again, just in a snap of the finger, Humberto takes back the momentum. You see how quick it has been for Humberto. Every time Ricochet gets rolling, one simple maneuver is completely changing the tides of this match. That speaks volumes to what endurance Ricochet has in the tank tonight. Humberto can't, trying to stay on the offense. Ricochet fire his carry position and he rolls out with it. Ricochet is hurt. Humberto Carrillo smells blood in the water. And both members of Los Lotharios could be punching their ticket to the quarterfinals back to back weeks over a team that has done them wrong in the past. What a maneuver by Humberto. Scaling the ropes in the most unique way into the moon so but Ricochet survives. A close call for the one and only, but the heart, the soul of Ricochet continues to persevere. That was an amazing maneuver by Humberto, the way he utilized the ropes to his advantage. A springboard so unique out of the arsenal of Humberto, but Ricochet has still got some life left in him. Now Humberto once again just trying to shake the cobwebs off. Meanwhile, Ricochet full height of steam, keeping it simple off the forearm. Humberto rolling to the outside again, but when is he going to learn his lesson that there is nowhere to run from a man who can jump from pillar to post? Ain't afraid to take things to the heavens, and there is the corkscrew that Ricochet was looking for earlier on in this match. This time it lands flush, and there is a downed member of Los Lotharios in aisle seven. Once again, Carrillo on the outside. And Ricochet's heading to the top. Oh, and Humberto, smart to move out of the way there. Not allowing Ricochet to take things to the sky like he wanted him to. And Humberto almost playing a game of cat and mouse with Ricochet right now, realizing that Ricochet is moving a little bit slower in this match. But Ricochet still, however, able to get the upper hand off the top rope. And down goes Carrillo. Ricochet's got a few unique tricks of the trade in his arsenal as well. Some maneuvers that he doesn't pull out too often, but when he does, they are effective, just as we saw in that maneuver previously. Now look at this, could be going for a, an unpretty error. Oh no, look at this submission hold, another maneuver that Ricochet does not pull out too often. You see how the knee wrenches into the trapezoid to the shoulder of Humberto Carrillo. Humberto down, Ricochet off the middle buckle. Such great heights off the moon salt, but it's not enough to keep Carrillo down for the three. Ricochet is putting on a performance tonight. It speaks volumes to the superstar caliber of the one and only, but Humberto doesn't give a damn who you are, where you've been, or what you've done. He wants the victory. He wants to see his name in the lights moving on to the quarterfinals of this tournament. Things are starting to roll at a quicker pace. Back and forth, the momentum swings, but only one man can move on to the CWC. Will it be Humberto Carrillo, or will it be Ricochet? Ricochet, oh, looked like he would have been 
Eyeing up the ropes, but Carrillo stopping him in his tracks in a tilt-to-whirl backbreaker that the late great Eddie Guerrero would be proud of. Now it's Ricochet on retreat, trying to create some distance as Humberto Carrillo nailing him into the spine with that tilt-to-whirl moments ago and sends Ricochet for a crash landing to the outside. I said it earlier, we'll say it again. You remember the spear of Braun Breaker cut Ricochet in half last night? The press slam maneuver of meaner than evil himself. And then Omos dragging Ricochet all around ringside, throwing him up, throwing him down. Ricochet not coming to this matchup with 100% endurance tonight. The midsection of the one and only has got to be bothering him in this pursuit to become the next quarterfinal participant in the Cruiserweight Classic. And Humberto's trying to capitalize. Going for a springboard, but Ricochet says otherwise. And now a springboard by Ricochet, but Humberto says no. These two men did their homework coming into this match. But, it, oh, you better not turn your back. Backslide, Ricochet's gonna steal it here. Not just yet. Similar to what we saw in the opening round. Matchup between Johnny Gargano and Akira Tozawa a few weeks ago. Gargano resorting to a pinfall, quick pinfall, to steal the victory over Akira Tozawa. Ricochet trying to do the same with that backslide. Carrillo popped out, and that was an awesome counter. You saw a moment ago, Ricochet was going for that discus forearm, but Carrillo was already mid-air and hit that lariat. Who's gonna get the upper hand here? Again, the pendulum of momentum continues to swing back and forth. Humberto going back to the basics with what works in this match. Another tilt to world backbreaker. Ricochet avoids. Now it's Carrillo down and Ricochet just jumps up in the air. A simple senton, but then follows it up with the shooting star press. And off the combination maneuvers, Ricochet scales the ropes from the heavens with the Phoenix Splash. Dead center of the ring, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Ricochet is going to the quarterfinals. An incredible matchup, an incredible performance, showcasing the heart, the soul, and the resilience of the man we call the one and only Ricochet. Here is your winner, Ricochet. Well, the next clash in the quarterfinals of the CWC is set. For the first time since December the 9th of last year, the big strong boy Tyler Bate will go one-on-one -on -one with the one and only Ricochet. But coming your way next Saturday afternoon is the Irish ace, J.D. McDonough, battling Prince Pretty, Tyler Breeze, in the first round of the CWC. And also coming your way, seven afternoons from this evening, the invincible Ilya Dragunov from Raw. All the way from Spain and representing SmackDown is the young and exciting Axiom. The final matches in the first round of the CWC coming your way next Saturday afternoon, live at 3 p.m. Eastern time, right here in the Hammerstein Ballroom. And as for tonight, Tyler Bates sees his hand being raised, and as does the one and only Ricochet. Another quarterfinal matchup is set as the Cruiserweight Classic and Tournament continues to unfold. Thank you for joining us this afternoon in Manhattan, New York. Tonight, the one and only Ricochet sees his opportunity and is victorious in the Big Apple. Prepare for the most exciting 10 minutes a fast-paced 600 seconds, and all the action you can handle. Coming your way, exclusively, each and every Wednesday, only on the Noah Nation Gaming TikTok. The superstars of Raw and SmackDown race to the finish line on Velocity. Competition at an all-time high that you won't see anywhere else. Scan the QR code, follow on TikTok, and don't miss a second of Velocity. This is the first of the two final first round matches in the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Who is on their way to the quarters? We're gonna find out live this afternoon inside the Hammerstein Ballroom, Manhattan, New York. And here comes competitor number one, Prince Pretty, Tyler Breeze. The following 
is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from seasonal residencies, weighing in at 212 pounds, Tyler Breeze. Here are the accomplishments for Tyler Breeze, Red, one time NXT champion, but you are looking at the man or I should say at least one of the men who helped put the brand known as NXT on the map. Back in 2013, 2014, 2015, some of the emerging years of the career of Tyler Breeze. This man made evented several NXT takeovers, went toe to toe with some of the best of them, including Neville, Finn Balor, Sami Zayn, even Hall of Famer, Jushin Thunder Liger. Tyler Breeze has been in the ring with some of the absolute best from bell to bell, not just in WWE, but from all across the globe. And tonight, Tyler Breeze, a veteran of the squared circle, has a chance to add to his list of accolades. If he can move on, advance in the CWC, qualify for the quarterfinals, he will be one step closer to, of course, not only winning the entire tournament, but earning a future opportunity at the WWE Cruiserweight Championship. Tyler Breeze, as we mentioned, a veteran of the ring, but still has a ton of years left in the tank. And tonight could be the start of a whole new opportunity in the career of Prince Pretty. With the man standing across from Tyler Breeze tonight, hungry for opportunity as well, the cold, calculated, and vicious Iris Ace. And his opponent from Bray County, Wicklow, Ireland, weighing in at 180 pounds, J.D. McDonough. J.D. McDonough may be the hungriest man coming into this matchup. You remember just a few months ago on SmackDown, J.D. went one-on-one -on -one with the current Cruiserweight Champion Santos Escobar for the Cruiserweight title. Unfortunately, McDonough coming up short on that night. So you gotta believe with McDonough having a recent opportunity at the gold and having it slip through his fingers, has gotta be more hungry than ever to seize the opportunity tonight, move one step closer to winning the entire tournament, and move one step closer to becoming the number one contender. JD McDonough, so cold, so calculated, vicious, downright violent at times inside of the ring. Former Cruiserweight Champion, and that is for good reason. This is a man who took NXT UK during its time as well as NXT by storm and now a part of SmackDown is looking to do the same exact thing. We have two more first round matches in the CWC. We are gonna kick off the first one right now here in Hammerstein Ballroom. Tyler Breeze, JD McDonough. The bell has sounded and we are underway. Of course, the quarterfinals gonna kick off next Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern time, and then just a few hours later, it'll be the No Mercy live premiere event from Baltimore, Maryland at 5 p.m. And then 24 hours after that, we are coming your way from Chicago for Monday Night Raw's Unforgiven. It's gonna be a busy weekend next week between the CWC, No Mercy, and Unforgiven. You're not gonna to wanna to be anywhere else but tuning into the action as JD McDonough takes down Tyler Breeze, trying to get things going in your opening bout. So to come tonight, we will see the invincible Ilya Dragunov, one of the two Monday Night Raw participants in this tournament, taking on SmackDown's Axiom. McDonough going for an early cover here. Gets the two, but Tyler Breeze pops the shoulder off the canvas. Of course, the other Monday Night Raw participant in this tournament being the big strong boy, Tyler Bate, did advance last week, as you saw moments ago. Meanwhile, J.D. McDonough knocking Tyler Breeze off the apron. That's a hard fall to take early on this matchup. Not going to play into the endurance factor of Prince Pretty, and neither is that suicide dive right to the heart of Tyler Breeze. We mentioned it before, we'll say it again. Tyler Breeze has been in the ring with some of the all-time greats, but has he been in the ring most recently with some of the young and hungry talent in the WWE locker room? J.D. McDonough wants that opportunity quite possibly more than anybody tonight. He's been waiting for this opportunity for months on end, and after seeing the championship so close, yet so far, the opportunity slipped through his fingers a few months ago on SmackDown. McDonough wants his piece of the pie tonight. Now off the apron, taking down Tyler Breeze, and Breeze has got no answer for the Iris ace, J.D. McDonough. Kind of a Tyler Breeze needs to hustle up and get back inside between the ropes, but he's met with a ripcord knee, and that could be all she wrote. Oh, only a one count there. 
Hammerstein Ballroom coming unglued. JD McDonough trying to disinfigurate the Prince Pretty looks of Tyler Breeze off that knee and a forearm for good measures. Going for the boot right to the rib cage. This is some of the cold and calculated offense that we discussed out of McDonough. A lot of strikes, a lot of hard hits. And also not afraid to take things to the air as it looks like JD McDonough may be doing here as he has been in control the last number of minutes. And off of the middle rope, off of Brett's rope, delivering the forearm right to the good looks of Prince Pretty. Tyler Breeze is in trouble. He's got to get the train back on the tracks. Or J.D. McDonough is going to have a field day picking apart Tyler Breeze until he eventually gets the three count. But there's the comeback by Tyler Breeze, showing some signs of life. A beautiful, beautiful Tornado DDT in front of a crowd that certainly appreciates it. Tyler Breeze trying to get things going. Tried to go for the cover to no avail, but sends J.D. McDonough into the ropes. Drop down, lead frog, nice elbow, keeping it simple yet effective there, and also outrunning J.D. McDonough here tonight. Don't turn your back on the Irish ace, however, stack it up. Prince Pretty into the bridge. Well, beautiful pinfall there, but not the beautiful ending J.D. McDonough was looking for. Oh, look at that, look at that! Takedown into the double stomp. Tyler Breeze showed some signs of life, but J.D. McDonough flipped the switch in a matter of moments and is back in control of this first round match. This has certainly been a showcase of the Irish Ace since the opening bell. Tyler Breeze rolling to the outside, trying to create some distance between him and his opposer. As this fight continues, you gotta wonder if endurance is gonna play a factor. And if this pace keeps up and JD just keeps his foot on the gas pedal, how much longer can Tyler Breeze last in this match? Breeze on the outside and JD McDonough. Is he going for the count out here? I'm not sure if it's, it might be a little too early for a count out victory. And I think this might be a mistake, allowing the veteran of the matchup some time to breathe. We'll see if J.D. McDonough comes back to haunt him right there. But there's the German into the bridge. And Breeze gets the shoulder up again. I wonder if J.D. McDonough needed that pause to try to recalculate his next move. Breeze up against the ropes again. Now what does J.D. got in mind? Sends him into the ropes and McDonough, he's just picking apart Tyler Breeze right now. You know, J.D. McDonough may be the cruiserweight division version. Cruiserweight division version, excuse me, of Randy Orton. Just cold, just calculated, just picks apart his opponents. Tyler Breeze right now trying to turn the tides. Off the DDT, wait a minute. Could be going for the unprettier. A la Christian Cage into the cover. Will that do it? Oh, he almost had him there. Tyler Breeze. Went for the kill when he saw the window of opportunity open and went for the beauty shot, but not to be delivered on time. Over here singing the praises of J.D. McDonough, comparing him to Randy Orton in a sense when it comes to his arsenal inside of the ring and certainly his attitude. Meanwhile, Tyler Breeze turned the tides, the unprettier, went for the beauty shot to no avail. And once again, J.D. McDonough in the snap of the fingers is back in control. Urinagi! Breeze has got to get back into this. But has he already thrown his best shots at J.D. McDonough? As we saw two signs of life, but to no avail. We said it before, we'll say it again. This has been a showcase of J.D. McDonough in this opening matchup. Tyler Breeze may just be delaying the inevitable right now. There's a reversal there. to be a misstep by McDonough. Crash that center of the ring, and J.D. once again stacking up Breeze. Hops the shoulder off the canvas. I do not know if Tyler Breeze was expecting this level of fight from McDonough here tonight. Did he underestimate him coming into this matchup? All remains to be seen. We keep fighting till we hear a bell, and once again McDonough going back to the well with what works. With the soles of the boots on the rib cage of T. Breezy. 
Now on the apron, Tyler Breeze trying to create some distance, playing a game of cat and mouse with JD McDonough. And Breeze caught him off guard. Here we go. Tyler Breeze starting to get rolling here. Cross by to the outside, and McDonough is down. It's now or never. Tyler Breeze needs to start mounting some momentum in this match. McDonough back inside the squared circle. Tyler Breeze slow to capitalize, however. Gotta wonder if that is gonna play a factor into this matchup as Breeze comes back into the ring and JD McDonough lying in wait for the opponent. Send him Breeze into the corner. Nobody home. And Tyler Breeze stacking up JD McDonough in the corner. McDonough on the ropes. Tyler Breeze now. Looking for one final blow. You notice Tyler Breeze not going for the cover right now. Realizes he needs to inflict some punishment on the Irish Ace before he can try to gain a victory tonight. McDonough on spaghetti legs. Breeze with another crossbody from the top. And will that do it? Into the cover. Dead center of the canvas. Oh, man, that was close. That was a close call. Came from the top of the cross body. McDonough gets the shoulder up at 2.5. And on the back body drop by JD. Tyler Breeze once again started climbing the rugs of the ladder to gain momentum in this match. But JD McDonough stopping him in his tracks. Now sending Breeze to the outside. Absolutely brutal. And what has McDonough got in mind? Could be going for that double stop. Oh, man. Tyler Breeze sidestepped it. J.D. McDonough landed on his feet, but barely. He might have broken an ankle off that. Nobody home. J.D. McDonough soles of his feet on the floor of Hammerstein Ballroom. And Tyler Breeze realizes that J.D. is in pain. That may be the deciding factor of this matchup. As you see, Breeze is starting to work on those legs right now. A mistake by J.D. McDonough. He might have taken himself out in this contest. Breeze getting back into the ring. Could be going for the count out or could just be trying to gain some rest here. Rest and recuperate in the midst of this first round battle. J.D. back inside of the ring. Collar and elbow. J.D. gets the best of it. McDonough just going to keep swinging, man. Got to give the kid credit. Breeze back into the ring. J.D. goes for the drop kick to no avail. Tyler Breeze from behind. Neckbreaker. <laughs> Tyler Breeze may have an answer. Or not, as the rug gets pulled out from underneath of him. Oh, now McDonough going back to the top rope. His legs have got to be in pain, but he's going to fight through it and delivers the double stomp to the rib cage. Breeze is down. And wait a minute, JD's going back to the top. He's going for it a second time. Squashing Tyler Breeze between the soles of his boots and the canvas underneath of him. Oh, now J.D. McDonough, this is a smart decision. Absolutely squash the rib cage. Take the breath out of the lungs of Tyler Breeze and now try to stretch him out. Get him to give up. Get him to tap. Pass out. Whatever the decision, just try to win this matchup. But will Tyler Breeze hold on? Tyler Breeze may be fading. J.D. McDonough's only got so much life left in him to hold this maneuver. It's not an easy task on the other side of the... Ring either as Tyler Breeze with a counter. With a nice takedown. Oh, Breeze could have been going for a super kick there. JD McDonough is still coming unglued. Breeze doesn't have an answer right now, but JD McDonough has got plenty of them. That's going to do it. Into the cover. No! Tyler Breeze is going to keep swinging until the cows come home. But J.D. McDonough, eyes locked sharp on Prince Pretty. Smells blood in the water. Going for that same Death Valley driver variant again. And that'll do it. A showcase of athletic ability and certainly a showcase of that cold-hearted son of a bitch, J.D. McDonough. Tyler Breeze put up a fight, but in the end, the Iris Ace is coming out on top. What a matchup. Here is your winner, J.D. McDonough. Well, there you see, 
the updated bracket as Tyler Breeze name fades to dust and JD McDonough becomes participant number seven in the quarterfinals of the CWC. But coming up in moments, the final first round match of the Cruiserweight Classic as SmackDown's Axiom battles Monday Night Raw's invincible Ilya Dragunov, who is gonna get eight, the spot of eight in the CWC. And as for this opening contest, the Irish ace JD McDonough absolutely showcasing his talents in the middle of Hammerstein Ballroom. Tyler Breeze put up a fight, but in the end, McDonough was too much for Prince Pretty to handle. Spot number seven of eight goes to the Irish ace. As the final first round match of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament, seven spots of eight have been filled, but who will secure position number eight? We will find out in moments as Axiom makes his way down the aisle. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring from Madrid, Spain, weighing in at 154 pounds. Axiom, one of the newest and brightest stars to Friday Night SmackDown, but is yet to really seize an opportunity. But tonight could be the night to change the momentum of Axiom's career on the blue brand. Certainly a tall task ahead of the first ever NXT Heritage Cup winner in Axiom as he goes one-on-one -on -one with a former NXT United Kingdom champion and most recently a former Intercontinental champion in Monday Night Raw's invincible Ilya Dragunov. Nonetheless, win, lose, or draw. This is going to be a great matchup on both ends of the spectrum. Of course, the winner will meet J.D. McDonough next Saturday afternoon in the first quarterfinal matchup of the CWC. And one of two Monday Night Raw participants in this tournament making their entrance in Hammerstein. Tyler Bate had success last week. Will Ilya Dragunov follow as we get set for this first round collision? And his opponent from Moscow, Russia, weighing in at 187 pounds, Ilya Dragunov. Ilya Dragunov has already had an incredible year, becoming one of the faces of Monday Night Raw. He took the red brand by storm, waltz into WrestleMania back in February, and kicked off his Intercontinental Championship reign. A reign that took Dragunov through defenses, successful ones at that, over names like Shinsuke Nakamura, Tyler Bate himself, Apollo Crews, Xavier Woods, and more. Dragunov, of course, felt the expiration date on that reign back in July at Money in the Bank in a classic battle against the defiant LA Knight. Ilya Dragunov now looks to a new opportunity. Fit in the weight class of the cruiserweight division, he looks to become one of eight in the quarterfinals of the CWC. And just imagine if Dragunov can become the number one contender in the near future for the Cruiserweight Championship. A whole lot of writing on each and every matchup. And here we go with your final first round match in the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. The first round set to close, but who is gonna make their way to the quarters? Starting next week, it's Axiom. It is Dragunov. It's Manhattan, New York, Hammerstein Ballroom. The lights are on bright in the Big Apple, and we are underway. <laughs> Once again, the winner of this matchup meets the winner, or I should say, excuse me, meets the winner from earlier tonight in J.D. McDonough. Really put on a showcase against Tyler Breeze earlier this evening. Nonetheless, Dragunov starting to unload on Axiom in the early going. It has been well documented. Ilya Dragunov, one of the toughest superstars in the Monday Night Raw locker room without a shadow of a doubt. As Axiom, however, gonna take things to the air that is certainly his strong suit flying all around the sky using the ropes to his advantage. As we see right here, beautiful step up Tornado DDT. Very creative out of the arsenal of Axiom. And he comes through the ropes with a tope suicida. Axiom no stranger to taking things to the sky. And if any match called for it, it is certainly the first round of the Cruiserweight Classic. Ilya Dragunov hot out of the gate. Oh man, Dragunov is going early with these strikes in the corner. Couple of lariats squashing Axiom up against the turnbuckles. And these two men coming to this matchup shot out of the cannon. That bell rang, what, just over a minute ago? 
They've been back and forth ever since. Axiom down, Dragunov going to the top rope. Not familiar, but certainly no stranger. Dropping the elbow on the spine of Axiom. Going for the early pinfall. It's gonna take more to keep that young man from Spain down. Ilya Dragunov, as we just mentioned, former Intercontinental Champion, one of the faces of Monday Night Raw without a doubt. And without the championship or not, Dragunov has become one of the names associated with the red brand. Looking to etch his name in history starting tonight as a possible future winner of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Or could it be the young and exciting Axia with a pop-up dropkick takes Dragunov off his feet. Coming your way next Saturday afternoon, shortly after the Cruiserweight Classic, it is no mercy at 5 p.m. Eastern time, and then just 24 hours later, 5 p.m. as well next Sunday night, it'll be unforgiven. Cannot wait to get the next weekend. It is going to be live premiere after live premiere. Tons of action that you're not going to want to miss. Axiom sending Dragon off on the ring apron and snaps the neck on the top rope. That's a long fall down to the floor for the Invincible One. Dragunov on spaghetti legs right now. Axiom, I don't know if he's pondering to probably take things to the air again. They don't call it high risk, high reward for no reason, but took too long to make a decision. Ilya Dragunov gonna bring him outside the hard way. Dragunov not afraid for an old scrap around ringside, that's for sure, as he just gets sent into the barricade. Dragunov down, is Dragunov out. Meanwhile, Axiom, Oh man, off the apron, not even utilizing the ropes that time. Just a standing moonsault, shot out like a bullet, taking down Dragunov. Now Axiom again off the apron. Axiom's best strong suit, if you will, his ace in the hole in this match is certainly gonna be his speed and his agility and his willingness to throw caution in the wind. Ilya Dragunov is known for his strikes, is known for his toughness, is known for his resilience. Who's gonna have the better hand? And who is gonna make it to the quarterfinals tonight? Into the bridge by Axiom, will that do it? Gets the two, but Dragunov pops his shoulder up. And great contest just a few minutes into things. We wanna thank you for joining us for the fourth Saturday afternoon in a row here in Manhattan, New York, Hammerstein Ballroom. It's been an amazing first round of the Cruiserweight Classic, but the quarterfinals kick off next week as we move into the semis, the finals. Still four more weeks of this amazing tournament to go as Axiom now off the top rope from the heavens with the crossbody. Ilya Dragunov has been on the receiving end time and time again over the last few minutes of those high-risk maneuvers by Axiom, and they have all worked out in the favor of that young man who climbs the ropes again and hits another crossbody, this time dead center of the canvas. It goes for the pinfall there, but it's only a one. And that just speaks to the toughness and the resilience of the invincible Ilya Dragunov. There's a reason he held the Intercontinental Championship from WrestleMania to Money in the Bank of this year and had many of defenses all the way through. Maxium, nice takeover into the bridge. Maxium is looking good in this matchup. Dare I say, it's a little bit of a parallel to what we saw moments ago with JD McDonough controlling most of that match against Tyler Breeze. Will it be the same result here? Ilya Dragunov trying to make sure it is not the same result. Couple of lariats. Not enough enthusiasm behind him to keep Axiom down, but certainly that kick underneath the ring, I should say underneath the foot of Dragunov, Enough to keep Axiom down, at least for the moment. Now Ilya starting to unload. So then Axiom into the ropes and a high knee. High knee, almost Triple H-esque. Now a boot, Dragunov is a scrapper inside of that ring. Hard hitting, tough as nails. It's a fight from pillar to post anytime you meet the invincible one inside the confines of the ropes. Axiom is finding out firsthand right now. Tries to roll to the outside. You see Ilya Dragunov, he had it scouted. He already followed Axiom out there, not giving him a second to breathe. And a power bomb on the outside of the ring. My goodness. This absolute berserker. The invincible Ilya Dragunov. This is a man who defeated, oh man. Oh, what an overhead throw. This is a man who once ended the 870-day reign of Guther for the NXT United Kingdom Championship. 
Dragunov has been in the main event. He's been in the spotlight. He's been under pressure many a times throughout his career, and he has succeeded. But Axiom trying to make sure tonight is not one of those nights. Heading to the top, Dragunov trying to run away, but Axiom found him with the axe hammer. Another great contest on hand as the entire Cruiserweight Classic has been thus far. Dragging off his days in the corner. Axiom moving him right into position. There's not much Dragging off can do about it. Oh, wait a minute. I think we know what comes next. Axiom loves to utilize the Spanish fly from the heavens. And into the cover. Looking for a wrap. But Ilya Dragging off kicks that again. Axiom throwing everything in the kitchen sink. At the man they call the Invincible One, but Dragunov continues to persevere. Oh, look at this. Going for the running sit-out powerbomb is Ilya Dragunov. Some power deep in the arsenal. Axiom up, but only by force of the Invincible One. Into the ropes again, and another high knee. Enough to knock anybody out. Axiom is gonna feel that one on Sunday morning, that's for damn sure. Oh man, Dragunov starting to have his way with Axiom. Ragged on him with those chops to the chest. Now wait a minute, Ilya Dragunov with Manhattan, New York behind him, loaded up for the headbutt. The torpedo shot out from a cannon into the cover. And Ilya Dragunov is going to the quarterfinals. What a matchup between Axiom and Ilya Dragunov here tonight in Manhattan, New York. Axiom took things to the sky time and time again, but it was the hard-hitting perseverance of Ilya Dragunov that secured the Here's victory. Ilya and there you see the bracket, and there you see 16 has officially become eight participants. The quarterfinal round is set for the CWC. And it all kicks off next Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern Time. The Irish ace, J.D. McDonough, battles Monday Night Raw's invincible Ilya Dragunov. And also coming your way at 3 p.m. Eastern Time next Saturday afternoon, one half of Los Lotharios, Angel Garza, battles a former NXT Heritage Cup winner in Nathan Frazier all the way from the UK. The quarterfinal round is set for the CWC, and it all begins next Saturday afternoon, right here in Hammerstein Ballroom, Manhattan, New York, 3 p.m. Eastern time, to be followed by No Mercy, 24 hours later by Unforgiven. Next weekend is gonna be a weekend we don't forget for a long, long time. Thanks for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you next week. After No Mercy is shown, and a queen is crowned, the bad blood will boil over. Coming your way, live on Saturday night, October 19th, from the TD Garden in Boston, Massachusetts. Witness the unforgiving, high octane, and high stakes action as Raw, SmackDown, and No Nation Gaming channel membership proudly present WWE Bad Blood. And as we mentioned, we are kicking things off with the young upstart Nathan Frazier taking on a former Cruiserweight champion himself, Angel Garza. Should be a great contest to kick things off here in Manhattan. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring from Jersey in the Channel Islands, weighing in at 182 pounds. Nathan Frazier! Well, this young spark plug, Nathan Frazier, certainly made a name for himself a few weeks back in his opening round contest in the CWC, going one on one with a former NXT Tag Team Champion in Wesley. A very high offense matchup that in the end, Nathan Frazier picked up the victory in. The biggest match of his career a few weeks ago, but now the ante is up tonight. It is the quarterfinals of the CWC. 
And this man participating out of the NXT brand is looking for a full-time spot in the Cruiserweight division through the means of this tournament. But his opposer, Angel Garza, is looking to make his way back to the top of the division and earn himself a future opportunity at the Cruiserweight Championship of the World. And his opponent, representing Los Lothorios from Monterey, Mexico, weighing in at 205 pounds. Angel! Well, Angel Garza had the mind game over Mustafa Ali a few weeks ago in their first round matchup. We talked about it then that Angel Garza had earned a victory over Ali months ago on SmackDown. They finally met back up in the means of the CWC and once again Garza had the number of Mustafa Ali and it was definitely a shocker to those amongst the Manhattan New York Hammerstein Ballroom but nonetheless Angel Garza all the tools to be a success. And as we mentioned, he has been a champion before in the Cruiserweight division. We know what's on the line, not only to be the winner of the CWC, but of course the winner of this match will earn a future opportunity at the championship that will be defended later tonight in Baltimore, Maryland at No Mercy. But right now, this afternoon, we are kicking off the quarterfinals of the Cruiserweight Classic. Later tonight, it'll be J.D. McDonough taking on Ilya Dragunov. But right here, right now, it is Nathan Frazier one-on-one -on -one with Angel Garza. The bell has sounded and we are underway in the means of Manhattan, New York in the Hammerstein Ballroom. Lights are on bright. Go big or go home. We started with 16. We are down to eight. And right now, Angel Garza takes the momentum off the opening bell. And another... Moon salt there to, to, I should say, ground Nathan Frazier. And I'm sure Angel Garza did his homework coming into this matchup, showing how much high offense Nathan Frazier exported in that matchup with Wesley. Trying to beat him, not necessarily at his own game, but at least ground the young man tonight. As we've talked about with Frazier, the first ever NXT Heritage Cup winner. Made his way from NXT UK to NXT. A student of the current WWE champion, Seth freaking Rollins. Very young in his career. He's got all the tools to be a success. He is going to be a bright future spot here in the WWE. And it could start in the means of the CWC, but Angel Garza has other plans. It's Frazier. No momentum so far. And Garza takes things to the air. To pick and hero over the top rope. And down goes Frazier at ringside. Angel Garza, like we said, may have been an upset in the first round of the tournament defeating Mustafa Ali, and he's looking to keep that momentum going. Unfortunately, his tag team partner, his cousin Humberto Carrillo of Los Lotharios falling short to the one and only Ricochet two weeks ago. Ricochet will, of course, compete next week against Rawls Tyler Bate in the CWC. So Angel Garza going in alone for Los Lotharios in the rest of this tournament, but Nathan Frazier now trying to get back into it. Nice tilt to world. This is week five of the CWC. We're over halfway in the tournament thus far. It's been an amazing ride thus far, but still so much more action to go. Off the snap German into the bridge, but only a one. Gotta wonder if Nathan Frazier added any tools to the arsenal over the last few weeks in his preparation of fighting Angel Garza here tonight. And a nice maneuver there. Almost Finn Balor-esque with a chop and then following up with a drop to the side of the head. Nathan Frazier, a student of the game, and we see it in his arsenal. As we mentioned, a student of the current WWE Champion, Seth freaking Rollins. And that's only going to pay Nathan Frazier dividends throughout his career, and could certainly do so tonight. Angel Garza days on the outside, and Nathan Frazier saying, whatever you can do, I can do better. Taking things to the air and taking the fight to ringside here in Hammerstein Ballroom. Garza down at ringside, but Nathan Frazier looking to keep the foot on the gas pedal here as he comes off the apron with a short order lariat, and down goes Garza again. Remember, the winner of this match will meet the winner of next week's quarterfinal quarter matchup in the CWC between Dominic Mysterio and Johnny Gargano. And of course, later tonight, we will see J.D. McDonough taking on Ilya Dragunov, where the winner of that match will meet next week's winner between Tyler Bay and Ricochet. Off the springboard, Moonsault there, gets the two, and Fraser almost had him. And you gotta believe it will be an upset tonight if Nathan Fraser can get the win, especially after Angel Garza defeated Mustafa Ali a bit, in a bit of an upset in the first round. Nathan Fraser still very young in his career. Garza with the more veteran experience of the two. 
Let's see if that plays in. Garza was controlling the first few minutes, but Nathan Frazier starting to catch up, even the playing field. And now Sin Garza forcefully on the top. Angel having none of it there. Now springboard of his own, and a missile drop kick right on the button. And follows up with the moonsault that we saw earlier. And this time directly into the cover. Gets the two, but it's only a two. Nathan Frazier still got life left in the heart. And remember, we are kicking things off this Saturday afternoon at the CWC, but it's going to be an amazing 24 hours here in the WWE coming up in less than two hours, 5 p.m. Eastern time. We are heading to Baltimore, Maryland. Live premiere event, SmackDown exclusive No Mercy tonight at 5 p.m. Eastern. You're not going to want to miss it. And then tomorrow night, we are heading to Chicago, Illinois, another 5 p.m. Eastern start time, live premiere for the Raw exclusive Unforgiven event. But it all kicks off right here, right now, at the CWC. And Frazier muscling up Garza and dropping him on the apron. Not afraid to get a little ultra-violent in the means of this hardcore city of Manhattan, New York. Creating some separation there, but Garza gonna close the distance and send Nathan Frazier to the outside again. I had to do some damage on Angel Garza getting dropped on the apron. You see Garza not going to capitalize on sending Frazier to the outside. Wanted to catch his breath, but it may have only paid dividends to Nathan Frazier. Very creative slingshot elbow drop over the top. Angel Garza likes to perfect that helo over the top sometimes. But Nathan Frazier had his own variation in mind, and then a big time cutter. And once again, Angel Garza is on the run. Nathan Frazier came to play in the CWC. An impressive first round win of a former NXT Tag Team Champion of Wesley. And looking to continue that momentum right here tonight. Off the middle buckle with the moonsault. And he lands it flush. But Garza again survives. A great effort here by Nathan Frazier thus far. But Angel Garza, as we mentioned earlier, the more veteran of the two, prepared to go the distance if means necessary in this match. A nice counter there. Beautiful by one half of Los Lotharios. Angel and Humberto, for that matter, can be a little arrogant at times, can be a little underhanding in that ring, but certainly can't take, take away excuse me, their tools from bell to bell. Nathan Frazier getting his momentum stopped at a screeching halt as Garza looking for that drop kick to the side of the dome that has won him matches in the past and it may do it again tonight. Not just yet as Nathan Frazier kicks out. Garza almost had him there. A close call for the young man. Now Angel could have been looking for that face buster, whatever you want to call it, that he defeated Ali with a few weeks ago. Frazier realizing that. And a fighting an uphill battle and a beautiful shooting star standing on the canvas. And so much high offense back and forth. This momentum starts to swing in this matchup as we kick off the quarterfinals of the CWC. Frazier, holy hell! A springboard Frankensteiner on Angel Gorza. Dead center of the ring and he almost had him. Manhattan, New York coming unglued for the efforts between these two superstars tonight. Nathan Frazier hoisting Garza up on the top. Springboard Frankensteiner from the heavens. Garza had a crash landing in the middle of the W, dead center of the ring, but it wasn't enough to get the three count. Awesome efforts nonetheless by Nathan Frazier. Clearly willing to throw caution in the winds and the means of success tonight. I'm going for a frog splash, it looks like, but Angel had it scouted. And another crash landing, but this time, not the way Frazier wanted it. Able to survive, but certainly some damage done off that miss. Said it a few minutes ago, but the momentum starting to swing back and forth in this matchup as we enter the later rounds of this quarterfinal bout in the CWC. And Nathan Frazier continuing to go back to the well with what has worked for him throughout this match. Another drop kick. Trying to knock the bells loose of Angel Garza. Frazier heading to the top. Garza on the run, but Nathan Frazier not, not afraid to meet him on the outside. Big time cross body from the top. 
These men are getting creative tonight. That's for damn sure. Angel back inside the ring, not by will, but by force. And Frazier is on his tail. But what is Nathan Frazier gonna have to throw at Garza to pick up the win tonight? He's already done so much, but he continues to persevere. Standing moonsault this time off the springboard. It follows it up with the shooting star, but he went to the well too many times with the high risk maneuvers, and Garza had a counter. Got the knees up, and it may have been a mistake. Nathan Fraser getting cut in half. Sit out into the cover. This is how he beat Ali two weeks ago, but Nathan Fraser gets the shoulder up. And the matchup continues here in Manhattan, New York. And Angel Garza is starting to come unglued. He had Mustafa Ali beat with that same maneuver three weeks ago. But Nathan Frazier's just got something in the tank tonight that can't be stopped. And Gorza going to go to the well, up and over the top again. This is how you kick off the quarterfinal round of the CWC. We started with 16. We are down to eight. But only one man can ultimately win this tournament and earn themselves a shot at the Cruiserweight title in the near future. And both of these men want to see their names in the lights. Cruiserweight Championship will be on the line later tonight, 5 p.m. in Baltimore at No Mercy as Santos Escobar defends the gold against Alpha Academy's Chad Gable. But Nathan Fraser right now. Oh, beautiful Frankensteiner, dead center. Well, not dead center of the ring, but enough away from the ropes. Almost got the pinfall. Almost snuck away with the win there over Garza. Garza not going to allow it, sending Fraser back into the corner. The big time forearm trying to scramble the eggs of the opponent. Deliver the boots to the chest, or shall I say the heart. Back into the cover again. So many near falls in this matchup. Something's got to give. But Frazier again gets the shoulder off the canvas. Garza's got to be racking his brain right now. What is it going to take to put this young man away? Nathan Frazier will not die tonight. Big time counter, another reversal. Now it's Garza with the drop kick again. It was reversal for reversal there for a moment, but Angel Garza took Frazier with the drop kick. At some point, you start to run out of creative moves in your arsenal. You just got to go to the well with what may hurt you, but will certainly hurt your opponent. That's it. And Nathan Frazier takes the double knees. But Garza, late into this round, not watching his ring awareness. And the rope break saves Nathan Frazier there for a moment. Garza up in the top, and what has he got in mind? Hits the moonsault. And this time, from the absolute heavens of NYC. And elects not to go for the cover. Very interesting decision there, shall I say. As Nathan Fraser's on the outside, and Garza could be looking to go high risk again. Over the top, but this time he went to the well. One too many times. Third time is not the charm. Angel Garza crashing and burning at ringside. And now Frazier trying to create some distance, trying to build some momentum, muster up some energy to hopefully put the final nail in the coffin for a victory. Garza back on the outside. Nathan Frazier trying to meet him there. Garza with that counter, however. Now Angel sending Nathan Frazier to the barricade. What an effort by these two superstars tonight. Nathan Fraser's going to be crying for mercy right now. Off the barricade again, and on the double knees there, and both men are down at ringside. Referee's at a count of four. Angel Gore's is starting to stir, but if Nathan Fraser doesn't get up, well, I was going to say he could. Angel Garza could be earning a count out victory, but it looks like he's not done inflicting punishment just yet. Oh, Nathan Fraser getting out of it. And back inside the squared circle. Angel gonna follow him. Nathan Fraser might have caught him there. Wait a minute, tilt to whirl, head scissors. Angel's down. Fraser follows it up with the senton. And now scale on the ropes. Could be going for the Phoenix Flash that won in the matchup a few weeks ago. There it is, to the lower back of Angel Garza. Into the cover. Nathan Frazier picks up the victory. 
What a phenomenal match to kick off the quarterfinals of the CWC. My goodness, Angel Garza threw everything he had literally in his arsenal to try to keep down Frazier tonight, but this young man simply just wanted it more. Here is your winner, Nathan Frazier. Let's take a look at the bracket as eight men becomes seven. Angel Garza officially eliminated from the CWC and Nathan Frazier, the first man to move on to the semifinals in two weeks time right here in Manhattan, New York. A big win for Nathan Frazier. First Wesley in the first round and then a hard fought uphill battle in the quarterfinals sending Los Lotharios, Angel Garza packing, and Frazier's got a first class ticket to the semifinals. But who is gonna move on? It is JD McDonough and Ilya Dragunov in your following contest. Who's gonna join Frazier in the semis? We find out up next here in Manhattan, New York. It is main event time here in the Hammerstein Ballroom. It is time for your second of two scheduled Quarter final matches in the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Bray County, Wicklow, Ireland, weighing in at 180 pounds, JD McDonough. We'll come your way next Saturday afternoon. The quarterfinals of the CWC continue. And a very interesting affair as Dominic Mysterio is set to fight Johnny Gargano one-on-one. -on -one. These two men will be on the same side of the ring, teaming up with Ray against Imperium later tonight at No Mercy. But next Saturday, all bets are off when Dominic and Gargano meet one-on-one -on -one in the quarterfinals. J.D. McDonough, of course, just last week defeating Prince Pretty Tyler Breeze to advance to the quarters of the CWC. But now a big obstacle in the Irish Aces way as he goes one-on-one -on -one with a former Intercontinental Champion, the man who once defeated Gunther for the NXT United Kingdom Championship, that being the invincible Ilya Dragunov. But J.D. McDonough has made the most of big opportunities in the past, most importantly last week, defeating Tyler Breeze. We talked about it then, we'll discuss it again just a few months ago, McDonough was the number one contender for the Cruiserweight title. An opportunity that slipped through the hands of JD, but I'm sure this former Cruiserweight champion would love to get another opportunity. And whether it be Santos Escobar or Chad Gable, we'll see who walks away as the champion later tonight at No Mercy. But what if Monday Night Raw's participants in the CWC is making their way down the aisle in the middle of the Big Apple? And his opponent from Moscow, Russia, weighing in at 187 pounds, Ilya Dragunov. Well, the winner of this match will meet the winner of next week's quarterfinal matchup in the CWC as another Monday Night Raw participant, the big strong boy, Tyler Bate, is set to go one-on-one -on -one with Friday Night SmackDown's human highlight reel himself, Ricochet. Earlier this evening, we saw Nathan Frazier successful in the quarterfinals. He will meet the winner of Dominic and Johnny Gargano. But once again, the winner of this following matchup, J.D. McDonough and Ilya Dragunov meets the winner of Tyler Bate and Ricochet. The semifinals of the CWC kick off in two weeks, live right here, 3 p.m. Eastern time, Saturday afternoon. But still a lot of business to take care of before this tournament progresses weeks on. That's right here this afternoon in the middle of Hammerstein Ballroom, Manhattan, New York. Friday Night Smackdown's J.D. McDonough, the Irish Ace. Monday Night Raw's Invincible, Ilya Dragunov. Big time matchup set on hand as the quarterfinals continue. And your main event attraction, week five of the CWC. Certainly a big fight field between these two international competitors who have been to the top of the mountain respectively in their own aspirations in the past former champions here in the wwe but tonight an opportunity to move on to the next round and once again fight either tyler bate or ricochet when they get there both these men with similar styles at time a lot of striking in their arsenals jd mcdonough certainly very cold and calculated inside that ring and Ilya dragunov 
one of the toughest superstars we have ever seen in the WWE. Still pretty hot off the heels of an Intercontinental Championship reign that kicked off at WrestleMania in February. Came to a close back in July at Money in the Bank. Dragging off with another opportunity at hand. Here tonight to make, his, make a step one step closer to a championship opportunity on SmackDown for the Cruiserweight title. But J.D. McDonough wants that same goal. Once again, the Cruiserweight title will be on the line in less than two hours. Right down in Baltimore, Maryland, No Mercy, live at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. You will see the Cruiserweight title being defended as Alpha Academy's Chad Gable contest against the Emperor of Lucha Libre from Legado del Fantasma, Santos Escobar. All that and more coming your way later this evening, 5 p.m. at No Mercy in Baltimore. But we got to focus in on Manhattan, New York, right here, right now. J.D. McDonough with some early offense, but dragging off, not going to allow it. As he hangs up McDonough on the top rope. Simply an effective maneuver there by the Invincible One. Oh, man. That was a mean shot. Might have caught some of the jaw of J.D. McDonough on the way up. And a nice overhead throw. And McDonough goes down. Ilya Dragunov with so many ways to beat you. And that is one of the things that made him so successful throughout his Intercontinental Championship reign. The lariats, the strikes, of course the torpedo headbutt. Dragunov's got so many ways to get that three count. How will he try to do it against J.D. McDonough tonight? Or will McDonough pull the ace out of the hole and do what he did to Tyler Breeze last week? And that's simply make an example out of his opponent. Off the counter there, McDonough sending Dragunov into the barrier. Oh man, now into the steel steps. McDonough not afraid to throw down and get a little violent, especially in this hardcore city of New York. That's why we said J.D. McDonough is so cold, so calculated in his arsenal sometimes. He's one of those few superstars who not only has a lot of ways to beat you, but is not afraid to pick you apart limb by limb in an attempt to get that three count. That was one of the reasons he was one of those superstars that made his way from NXT UK to NXT. It's one of the reasons he's a former Cruiserweight champion, and it's one of the reasons he's got Ilya Dragunov preferably on the ropes right now. As Dragunov goes down to the canvas, not by will, but by force of the Irish Ace. Oh, but a nice counter there, blocking the strike mid-air. Now Dragunov, off McDonough, this reversal. Very evenly matched here when it comes to the weight and the size. Is dragging off. Wait a minute. Closing McDonough, closing the gap in the corner. Double lariat squashing the Irish Ace up against the turnbuckle pads. Now drag it off again with one of those hard strikes. Now drag it off. It's uncharacteristic usually to see him go to the top. We saw him tap into this last week against Axiom. Oh, and from the top. Now into the cover, and McDonough gets the shoulder up. Nice maneuver there by the invincible Ilya Dragunov. Again, we saw him tap in a little bit, a little bit of that high risk reward, if you will, last week against the competitor all the way from Spain in Axiom. It's still very uncharacteristic for Ilya Dragunov. Usually very ground-based, very toe-to-toe -to -toe with his opponents, if you will. And a nice Saito there, and McDonough getting dropped right on his dome. And he may be on the run, but Dragunov not going to allow it as he comes from the top with another crossbody, this time from the trajectory of the top rope down to the ground of the Hammerstein Ballroom. Ilya Dragunov throwing Tossin in the wind, all in the means of advancing to the semifinals of the CWC. Oh, and a crash and burn that time. McDonough had him scouted. And a hangman's neck breaker on the outside of the ring. The Irish ace with a brutal maneuver. And follows it up with a tope suicida. Shot out like a cannon. A bullet to the chest of Ilya Dragunov. That was a hard hit. And you see McDonough didn't get a, a big head of steam before that. He went directly from the ring right to the heart of Ilya Dragunov. And a ragged on him back to ringside. McDonough is kicking in into a new gear, and he comes off the apron again with that lariat. J.D. McDonough is not going to go down without a war, and Dragunov expected as such, but he is feeling it firsthand right now by the Irish Ace. 
A man who is trained by one half of the World Tag Team Champions, the Prince Finn Balor. J.D. McDonough's got so many tools in that arsenal, and he's certainly inflicting all of them on behalf of Ilya Dragunov right now. Now keeping it simple, keeping it old school with the suplex. Never goes out of style. Dragunov struggling to get to his feet, and you see J.D. McDonough taking his time to attack. Doesn't want to rush into a possible mistake as he might have right there as Dragunov boots right to the jaw. Falls over the senton. Same maneuver he was looking for on the outside, this time connected with it. Now it's McDonough trying to get his wits about him. But Ilya Dragunov looking to continue the momentum, keep the foot on the gas pedal. Now what has he got in mind here? Sending J.D. McDonough back to the outside. And I think Dragunov's wheels are spinning. He knows he's got to deep, dig deep down in the bag of trip to try to get a victory tonight. Tope suicide died through the ropes and J.D. McDonough sent Horn into the barricade. And once again tonight, Manhattan, New York is on their feet in appreciation of the efforts by Ilya Dragunov and J.D. McDonough as Dragunov is fired up. Ilya Dragunov got that full head of steam from pillar to post in the ring and then to the outside, so much so he sent J.D. flying into the steel barricade. Oh, but again! That's certainly a way to change the trajectory of the match. McDonough for the second time using his whereabouts to his Perfection there, wait a minute, McDonough. There's a counter by Dragunov. Could have been going for that double stomp he was hitting on Tyler Bate last week, but Dragunov says otherwise. Big time Lariat. McDonough to his feet, but Ilya Dragunov has been fired up ever since that suicide dive. He is not trying to allow a comeback here of the Irish ace. McDonough trying to get to his feet, but Dragunov is just not allowing it. He is grounding the opponent. And the Invincible One's in the corner. And I think we know what comes next. Could be looking for a torpedo headbutt. My goodness, nobody hits it harder. Into the cover. And Dragunov is going to the semifinals. Well, J.D. McDonough was certainly cold and calculated throughout that matchup. But Ilya Dragunov always has his ace in the hole, which is that torpedo headbutt knocking out his opposer. Here is your winner, Ilya Dragunov. And just like that, we are down to six as Ilya Dragunov joins Nathan Fraser in two weeks' time in the semifinals of the CWC. But what about next Saturday afternoon, live at 3 p.m. Eastern time? We will see Dominic Mysterio, one-on-one -on -one with the whole shebang, Johnny Gargano in the quarterfinals. And also coming up seven afternoons from right now, it is going to be the big strong boy, Tyler Bate, taking on the human highlight reel, Ricochet. The winner of this matchup will meet Ilya Dragunov in two weeks in the semifinals right here in Hammerstein Ballroom. A big time win for the former Intercontinental Champion, the invincible Ilya Dragunov certainly making a case to be a possible winner of the CWC. But well, ladies and gentlemen, it is live in less than two hours. It is No Mercy, the SmackDown exclusive live premiere event, and it all begins tonight, 5 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you in just a little while in Baltimore for No Mercy. Can't get enough universe mode? Well, now is your chance to secure a backstage pass to more universe than ever before. Become a Noah Nation Gaming Channel member and gain entry into monthly house shows that directly affect your episodic viewing of universe mode. Also, take a peek behind the curtain with behind the scenes updates, exclusive content to see how universe mode is brought to life each and every week. Hit the join button down below, become a Backstage Pass channel member, and get your front row seat to more universe than ever before.
It's a better time than any to become a Nomination Gaming Channel member. Saturday night, October the 12th. Saturday night, October the 26th. Witness the exclusive Halloween Havoc events. Hit the join button down below or the link up in the cards. Become a Nomination Gaming Channel member today and don't miss out on Halloween Havoc. Kick things off live from the Hammerstein Ballroom, Manhattan, New York. Thank you for joining us yet again this afternoon for week six of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Let's send things down to the ring. The following is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from San Diego, California, weighing in at 200 pounds. Well, Dominic Mysterio may have had the most emotional road to the semi, or excuse me, to the quarterfinals, as just in the first round he defeated his father Ray, and was an absolutely incredible matchup between Dominic and Ray. And Dominic certainly earning the respect of some of his naysayers on that night. But as we mentioned just last Saturday night at No Mercy, Dominic teamed up with Ray and his opponent here this evening, Johnny Gargano, in a losing effort against the common enemy in Gunther, Giovanni Vinci and Ludwig Kaiser of Imperium. Dominic Mysterio taking the pinfall by way of the ring general. So now Dominic turns his attention to a man he stood side by side with seven nights ago in the whole shebang, Johnny Gargano, but only one man can move on to the semifinals and take on Nathan Frazier next Saturday afternoon. Dominic Mysterio live and in living color, but here comes Johnny wrestling and his opponent from cleveland ohio weighing in at 199 pounds johnny gargano well johnny gargano defeating akira tozawa in the first round in the matchup that kicked off the cruiserweight classic and gargano looking to keep things going here tonight in the midst of this tournament but two losses pinned together between Gargano's first round match and tonight. One of them being the match we discussed last week at No Mercy, and then a number of weeks ago on SmackDown, Johnny Gargano met Guther one-on-one, -on -one, and it was a victory for the ring general. So Gargano having luck in the means of the CWC, but not necessarily outside of it. So let's see who's gonna be the better man tonight. Both coming in with a pretty even amount of momentum due to the events of No Mercy. Who is gonna punch their ticket to the semifinals next Saturday afternoon? Again, the winner of this match will meet Nathan Frazier, who defeated Angel Garza last week up. But here we go, Dominic and Johnny Gargano kicking things off here in Manhattan, New York. Still to come tonight, the big strong boy from Monday Night Raw, Tyler Bate takes on the one and only from SmackDown, Ricochet, as Dominic goes for the roll up there. Obviously looking for the quick cover over Johnny Gargano, but I think Dominic knows he's in the ring with a veteran. It's gonna take a lot more to keep Gargano down. Interestingly enough, though, that is, that is how Gargano got the three count in his first round match against Akira Tozawa. It was one of those quick three count victories. Dominic trying to keep things going, trying to get the momentum in the early going in this matchup. So far, so good for the young man who put down his father in the first round. Of course, the winner of later tonight's matchup between Tyler Bate and Ricochet will meet Ilya Dragunov next week as well. And then two weeks from now, Two weeks from now, Saturday afternoon, we will see the Cruiserweight Classic finale featuring the finals of the tournament and several more contests still to be assigned. It's gonna be a big week, two weeks from this, two weeks from today, excuse me. So hyped up for the Cruiserweight Classic. Can you get the words out? Dominic grounded and pounded on Johnny Gargano in the corner. Dominic looking hot so far. Gargano doesn't really have an answer for Johnny at the moment, or excuse me, for Dominic at the moment. Go for the cover there, and again, Gargano gets the shoulder up. Dominic, you gotta know he's not gonna get the quick victory. Sometimes we pin those quick pinfalls as one superstar trying to get into the psyche of the other, possibly throw them off their game, almost allow them to expend too much energy in the early going by kicking out. Sometimes it's really a case of the superstar not wanting to go the distance with their opposer, so trying to get the matchup done in the first few moments. Hard to call what Dominic's motive is, but nonetheless, Gargano just trying to get back into this matchup. Johnny Gargano, a veteran in this matchup. 
has wrestled all around the world, held championships around the world, even here in the WWE. Former NXT Grand Slam champion earlier this year was one half of the WWE World Tag Team Champions, but ever since moving to SmackDown in March, was really struggling to kind of get his feet under him on the blue brand. But throughout the summer, Gargano finally starting to pick up some victories, and this CWC could be what takes Gargano to the next level on Friday Night SmackDown. Of course, this tournament not only is just putting your name in the annals of history as the second ever winner of the Cruiserweight Classic on the line, but of course, the winner of this tournament will earn a future Cruiserweight Championship opportunity against whomever is the champion at that time, currently held by Santos Escobar, who retained the gold over Chad Gable last Saturday in Baltimore at No Mercy. Dominic trying to get back into this off the hip toss. Gargano goes underneath. And now Dominic with a big time lariat. Dominic's got to feel a little bit of extra pressure tonight. On the same accord, if Dominic can go one-on-one -on -one with Ray, his own father, and beat him inside the squared circle, well, I got to believe Dominic's absolutely afraid of nothing in this tournament. And I don't know if there's any opponent who's going to be able to match the heart of young Dominic Mysterio in the means of the Cruiserweight Classic as Gargano takes a spill from the top rope. And Dominic has got his eye on the whole shebang, who's just trying to get his wits about him at ringside. There goes Dominic with a little springboard. Big time maneuver by Mysterio. This Cruiserweight Classic Tournament very well could be the coming out party in a singles capacity for Dominic Mysterio. We have seen him held Tag Team Championship gold in the past with his father. But Dominic looking to etch his own history here tonight and continuing on next week and the week after. Gargano moving out of the way. Big time crash and burn by Dominic. And he'll call it high risk, high reward for no reason. Sometimes it does not work out the way you want. And Gargano making Dominic Mysterio find that out firsthand off that misstep. Dominic on the apron here. Look at that, getting the best of Gargano. Oh man, big time neck breaker. Hanging up Johnny Gargano in the top rope. That is not going to go well in the deep waters of this match. Is Dominic now. Back inside the squared circle. Snap Mare, Gargano, dead center of the ring, and a beautiful drop kick. Dominic Mysterio has controlled the majority of this matchup so far. Gargano starting to get his, his feet about him. Wait a minute, going to do it again? No, Dominic Mysterio with the counter. Gargano was starting to get the rug underneath of his feet. A few moments ago, Dominic countered out, but now Johnny Gargano heading back down the right path again. Again, Gargano defeating Akira Tozawa in the first round. The same afternoon that Dominic defeated Ray, and now their roads have led them to right here, right now in Manhattan, New York. Off the knee, and Dominic gets the shoulder up. Johnny Gargano now. Big time shoulder blocked by the whole shebang. Gargano's got so many ways to beat you inside of that ring. He can beat you off that slingshot. He can, wait a minute, wait a minute. Dominic Mysterio backslide. Looking to steal the victory, no. Gargano not going to have any of those games tonight. As we mentioned, Gargano, several submission holds in the arsenal. As we're about to see right here, stretching out Dominic Mysterio. Just one of the many ways Gargano likes to get victory. And Dominic is all kinds of torqued inside the middle of the ring. No way he's reaching the ropes right now. But Johnny Gargano all wrapped up on his backside, but there's Dominic Mysterio using the closed fist. Referee allowing a little bit of leeway in a city that knows extreme very well. I'm going to put in the corner by Gargano. Gargano fighting out of it. Wait a minute, drop toe hold. We know what comes next. Gargano escape on Dominic Mysterio. Going for the submission hold. And Dominic a little bit too far from the ropes to reach out and break the hold. He's going to have to find a way to get out of the grasp of Johnny Gargano. This submission has given Gargano so much success over the years. It's won him championships in the past. Is it going to punch his ticket to the semis? Oh, not just yet. Dominic once again finding a way. Throwing knees, throwing hands if he's got to. But Gargano not going to allow Dominic any window of opportunity to get back in this match. And even though, wait a minute, cover here. And Dominic gets the shoulder up again. As we were going to mention, even though Gargano escaped, may not have tapped out Dominic. It certainly did him some damage. And Johnny Gargano springboard. Big time tornado DDT on Mysterio. 
And Johnny Organo has completely turned this match around and he has rallied Manhattan, New York behind him. Organo has had plenty of battles in this city. He's won the NXT Championship not too far away in Brooklyn, New York. Now Dominic rolling to the outside, trying to create some distance, but Johnny Gargano looking to close that gap. Johnny Gargano not trying to allow Dominic to catch a breather and rest and recuperate. Johnny looking to keep the foot on the gas pedal here, and face first on the outside of the ring goes Mysterio. Gargano may have this match where he wants it. If this continues, Gargano's gonna have a first class ticket booked to the semifinals next Saturday afternoon. Again, here's Gargano really starting to kick things into a different gear with those closed fists. Whoa, but Dominic Mysterio gets out of the way. Missed elbow drop, wait a minute. Dominic Mysterio sending Gargano into the ropes and here comes Mysterio with the 619. Big time offense as Dominic scales the ropes. Could be looking for the frog splash that gained him success in the first round, but Johnny Gargano had it scouted. Gargano read Dominic Mysterio's playbook easily. And it leads to Dominic crashing and burning on the canvas. And Johnny Gargano, even off the 619, is the one standing. That is the veteran status of Gargano coming into play in this match. And Gargano almost had him there. Dominic Mundell knocked himself loopy off that frog splash with no landing that he was hoping for. Gargano misses for the Insiguri. Dominic Mysterio pulls him in. Nice hurt come on to take him down. Dominic's got to take advantage, though. He's heading to the top. Could be looking for another dive, maybe a frog splash. Or Gargano's getting to his feet. Here comes Dom. Big time drop kick. Right on the button of Johnny Gargano. Nailed it flush. And now look at Mysterio. Took to roll off the middle buckle. And Dominic elects for the cover. This could do it. Not just yet as Johnny Gargano continues to persevere. Now Gargano rolling to the outside. A change of roles here as Dominic heads to the sky again with a Topekian hero over the top rope. Johnny Gargano's head might have bounced off the floor of Hammerstein Ballroom. Knocks himself loopy. He's certainly not going to find himself the one securing the three count except being on the other end of said three. Dominic's got to keep his foot on the gas pedal, which is what he's doing right now, realizing Gargano is starting to get to his feet. And clearly, Johnny Wrestling still got a little more left in the tank as Dominic shoots him off, and with a big time Larry, it takes him off his feet once more. Dominic's got to go for the kill, whether that be another 619 or possibly roll the dice with another frog splash. Gargano, he got out of the way once, but that doesn't mean Dominic doesn't have a window to open it. There's another reversal by Gargano. Really starting to see the pendulum momentum switch back and forth the last few minutes. Nobody really controlling the matchup for too long. Oh, wait a minute, Gargano, you see how fast he got. Dominic in a predicament, and the slingshot right into the buckle. And Gargano goes for the cover. Will it be a three? Dominic gets the shoulder up, and the matchup perseveres. Close call there by Mysterio, but Gargano's got his eyes locked tight. Drop toe hold could be going for another Gargano escape. He's got it locked in on Dominic Mysterio. And with no choice, Mysterio taps out. Fatigue was starting to creep in, and Johnny Gargano wreaks the rewards of it. That Gargano escape earlier definitely did some damage on Dominic. The mood of the matchup just changed after that. And especially after this missed frog splash, Johnny Gargano found himself nearing victory. A slingshot, a second Gargano escape locked in, and enough to get the tap out and punch Johnny Gargano's ticket to fight Nathan Frazier next Saturday afternoon in the semifinals of the CWC. Here is your winner, Johnny. Well, there you see the bracket, and there you see Dominic Mysterio's name fade to black. Our first semifinal matchup confirmed as Johnny Gargano meets Nathan Frazier seven afternoons from today in the semifinals of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament.
Still to come, it is Tyler Bate and Ricochet. Who's going to fight Ilya Dragunov next week? We will find out in moments from Manhattan, New York in the sold-out Hammerstein Ballroom. What a way to kick things off with Johnny Gargano securing a victory. But it is time to determine the final spot in the semifinals of the 2023 Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Next week will be Johnny Gargano versus Nathan Frazier, as well as Ilya Dragunov versus the winner of this battle between Tyler Bate and Ricochet. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Paducah, Kentucky, weighing in at 190 pounds, Ricochet! Well, Ricochet has finally had about a week to cool down since his last in-ring competition. It was a busy month between SummerSlam and No Mercy for the one and only Ricochet. Last Saturday night, defeating Omos at No Mercy, and has had that one week to heal up, to rest and recuperate and try to set his mind on tonight's battle, but it's not gonna be an easy task ahead of him against Monday Night Raw's big strong boy, Tyler Bate. And with Tyler Bate participating in that fatal four-way match this coming Monday on Raw, you gotta wonder if that's gonna play into the strategy of the big strong boy, possibly looking to get the match done early to try to save some energy for the season premiere of Raw this coming Monday night. All remains to be seen, but Tyler Bate ready to walk down the aisle. And his opponent from Dudley, England, weighing in at 175 pounds, Tyler Bate. Well, Tyler Bate defeating Drew Gulak in the first round, Ricochet defeating Humberto Carrillo in the first round. Now they meet here tonight. And the last time these two men met one on one was on December the 9th of last year. Ricochet issued an open challenge for the Cruiserweight Championship, who was accepted. Tyler Bate, who was a part of the NXT roster at the time and made his way to Friday Night SmackDown because of the open challenge. Ricochet picked up the victory on that night, retaining the Cruiserweight title. Of course, since Tyler Bate has been a welcome participant to the Monday Night Raw locker room. But tonight, their paths cross again in the semifinals of the CWC. Gotta wonder if that previous match all those months ago is weighing on the mind of either of these men, especially the man who was the loser on that occasion, that being Tyler Bate. Nonetheless, this is gonna be a physical matchup all the way through both sides of the ring. And it is the final, quarterfinal match in the 2023 Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Ricochet, Tyler Bate, the bell has sounded and we are underway. Winner fights Ilya Dragunov next Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern time. As Tyler Bate going, oh man. Going for the kill early off the Brain Buster into the pinfall. Well, maybe what we said about Tyler Bate possibly wanting to get this match done in a little bit of a sooner fashion than normal remains a little bit true. Oh, wait a minute, Tyler Bate sending Ricochet up and over to the outside. Bate hitting the ropes. Look at the offense by Tyler Bate. My goodness. And Manhattan, New York already coming unglued for the big strong boy and the human highlight reel. Tyler Bate going for the kill early, up and over the top rope and crashing and burning on the outside, taking Ricochet down with him. Oh man, Ricochet trying to fight out between a rock and a hard place at the moment. Ricochet springboard, oh, lands on his feet like a cat out there. Ricochet is lucky that he saw Tyler Bate got out of the way, out of his periphery. Oh, Tyler Bate crashes and burns this time. This is a car wreck, and the matchup just got underway. Man, these guys ain't waiting around for any feeling out process. No waste in motion in this matchup that's been going for about a minute and change so far. These guys are going 100 miles per hour, and the bell just rang. Back inside the squared circle, and Tyler Bate looking to keep the momentum. Well, at least for a moment, we were back inside the squared circle. Bate taking Ricochet to the outside. Oh, wait a minute, look at this, stretching out the one and only. Knows he can't get the victory on the outskirts, but no matter where he's at, can definitely do some damage to Ricochet off that maneuver. But Ricochet can as well in the reverse. Oh man, a big time forearm. 
and follows it up with a shooting star at ringside. Man, who told these two superstars to go 100 miles an hour after the opening bell? There is no waste in motion tonight. Motivated as all hell to come out and absolutely conquer their opponent. With Elliot dragging off, waiting in the winds. Ricochet going for the pinfall, not just yet. Man, imagine how hard fought of a week it could be for Tyler Bay if he defeats Ricochet here tonight. And then goes into the fatal four-way at the season premiere of Raw. And then regardless of the result, could have Ilya Dragunov next Saturday afternoon. A ricochet trying to make sure that the load is going to be a little bit lighter for Tyler Bate to carry over the next week. Trying to find his name in the lights of the semifinals next Saturday afternoon. Look at that using the ropes as a tag team partner there. Off the tornado. Tyler Bate survives in the early going. I want to thank you for joining us this Saturday afternoon, week six of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Next Saturday, we'll be live at 3 p.m. Eastern time for the semifinals of the CWC. And then two weeks from now, we'll be live for the Cruiserweight Classic finale, which of course will feature the finals of the tournament and multiple other matches still to be signed. And Tyler Bate off the misstep. You see that happens already a lot so far in this matchup. Both men going for high risk maneuvers to no avail and it's only going to be worse as the matchup progresses but Tyler Bate taking Ricochet for a ride right now tilt to whirl around and around the big strong boy goes Ricochet is going to be dazed he's going to be confused but so is the man who hit the damn maneuver in Tyler Bate that's one way to ring the bell of the opponent scramble the eggs a little bit oh wait a minute Go for that reverse Boston. Tyler Bay has won matches in the past with this very maneuver. Remember, this is how he tapped out Sami Zayn back in June in the King of the Ring tournament. Tyler Bay could be looking for victory. Ricochet's close to the ropes, but if he's in so much pain, he's not gonna be able to reach out, but elects to grab the boots out from underneath Tyler Bay. Smart counter there by the one and only. But Bate not gonna allow Ricochet to take the momentum. Off to Saido and Ricochet go to the outside, trying to create some distance. Tyler Bate now in pursuit of the one and only. And at ringside again, where we have spent about half of this matchup already. Tyler Bate is fired up, motivated as all hell. Is the superstar one of two that are representing Monday Night Raw in this tournament. Of course, Ilya Dragunov being the other. Tyler Bate looking for the victory tonight. Imagine if Tyler Bate can defeat Ricochet tonight and then possibly walk in to the Fatal 4-Way this Monday live at the season premiere of Raw and become the number one contender for the Intercontinental Championship. I mean, what a week that could already be for Tyler Bate. And then possibly fighting Ilya Dragunov next Saturday could be a huge week for the big strong boy, but not if Ricochet has anything to say about it. Sending Bate into the ropes. Let's reversal there. Kick right to the rib cage. Double under hook power bomb sits out with it. Into the cover. That's gonna do it here. No close call as Ricochet gets the shoulder up. Big move by Tyler Bate there. They'll call him the big strong boy for no reason. He can fly around this ring. He can strike. He's also got the power game. Tyler Bate a full arsenal from bell to bell. And that's one of the reasons he's a former NXT Tag Team Champion. One of the reasons he was the first ever NXT United Kingdom Champion. And of course, one of the reasons why he was able to get through Drew Gulak in the first round of this tournament. Tyler Bate goes for the shot. Ricochet with the counter. Ricochet's got to start getting back into this thing. Takes out the knees. Look at this. German into the bridge. Too close to the ropes there for a pinfall, but at least the maneuver was landed with certainty. Now it's Ricochet who finds Tyler Bate, trying to create some distance. And it's the one and only who's looking to keep on the pressure. Ricochet was able to outlast the Nigerian giant Omas last Saturday at no mercy, but at what cost? Obviously, Ricochet can't be 100%. That's not going to slow him down. Look at that maneuver. There's a reason they call him the one and only, and it's because of maneuvers like that. And now looking for the kill. Hits the ropes. This is why they call him the one and only Moonsault, pinfall, will it be three? No! Big Manhattan, New York thought Ricochet had it. 
You got Johnny Gargano and Nathan Frazier signed for next Saturday. But who will be Ilya Dragunov's opponent? Will it be Ricochet, who's in control right now? Or will Tyler Bate get back into this matchup? On the top right now, I don't know what Ricochet's got in mind. Did you see that by the one and only? Who's got the adrenaline to pull out that kind of maneuver? And now back to the top rope. Ricochet isn't done yet. A picture-perfect moonsault from the heavens. And that's gonna do it. Ricochet to advance. Not just yet as Tyler Bates still got blood pumping through the veins. Ricochet has turned into a new gear in this matchup. And Bate rolling to the outside. But the one and only's wheels are spinning. And so is the body of Ricochet as he goes over the top rope. Cradles up his own body, and it explodes on Tyler Bate like a time bomb. Tyler Bate's got no idea where he is at ringside, and Ricochet realizes that. Elects to keep the pressure on. And what a great contest here. Your final quarterfinal matchup of the CWC. We started with 16 men. We are currently down to five, which will become four when we hear a three. Man, got to get back inside the ring. If this thing goes to a double count out, Ilya Dragunov's going to have a first-class ticket to the finals without having to compete in the semis. Back inside the squared circle. Ricochet went for the roaring forearm. Big counter by Tyler Bate with a German suplex off the reversal. The strength of Bate to able to get out of the way and grasp his hands quick enough off the German, off the shooting star. But Ricochet still fighting. These men have not slowed down since the opening bell. You gotta wonder what it's gonna take to secure a three count on either way of the ring and confirm our final semi semi-final matchup next Saturday. Tyler Bate now looking to just ground and pound on Ricochet. Maybe that's the smart idea. Slow down the pace of the matchup and try to take out some of those high-flying abilities of the one and only. As Bate with the kick, could be going for another double underhook powerbomb! Into the cover! Oh, and I thought the dose of the powerbomb was going to be enough, but Ricochet keeps on fighting! And Tyler Bates just going back to the well with what works. Realizes Ricochet may be right there. He just needs to inflict just a little bit more punishment. Now Tyler Bates collar and elbow. Gets pulled in with a strong shoulder block. Ricochet up just like that. How, how bad do these two superstars want it? But they are fighting through the pain as we are witnessing right now. You gotta wonder what these two men are gonna have left in the tank come next Saturday afternoon, especially if it's Tyler Bate walking out of this matchup with a victory and then going into that fatal four-way on Raw. Ilya Dragunov certainly going to be the fresher competitor next week in the matchup against either Ricochet or Tyler Bate. Backslide, Ricochet looking to steal the victory. Not just yet. Almost had him there, did he? There's a counter by Ricochet and a tilt to whirl. Head scissors, down goes the big strong boy. You notice these superstars going back to the well with some of their best maneuvers. And you can't blame them, it's going to what works. If it inflicts the damage, then certainly doesn't need to be pretty. Off the spine buster, Ricochet. That time, elects for a springboard. A little extra oomph in the moonsault. He's got Tyler Bate. Pursuit to the corner. And a cannonball follows it up with it. You see, as we continue to move on with this matchup, and you got to put two and two together, looking at the fatigue, the body language of these two men, that we got to be nearing a victory for one way or another. Ricochet taking things to the air in beautiful style. I don't think anybody flies through the skies as picture perfectly as Ricochet does. Now pulls Tyler Bay in again with the head scissors take down. Ricochet is just trying to let those maneuvers add up. Now just throwing some left, throwing some rights as we said a moment ago. Nothing pretty. Oh man, mean kick to the rib cage. That'll knock the wind out of you twice on Saturday. It goes for the victory roll. Or at least a variation of it. It almost had him, but you see the absolute disdain for that decision. Ricochet not able to get the three count just yet. 
How are these men still pushing forward? Oh, recall me! And that's gonna do it! No! Tyler Bates still has got life left in him. What is it gonna take to secure a three count? These men have been going pedal to the metal since the opening bell. No slowing down for either competitor, yet the matchup progresses. We still don't have, we still don't know, excuse me, who is gonna fight Dragon off next week. Ricochet's getting desperate, just throwing strikes, throwing anything he can, anything he's got enough energy to muster up. It's now Tyler Bate doing the same. And I'm going for a brain buster! Similar to what we saw earlier in this contest. Now Ricochet rolls to the outside, Tyler Bate, Tope Suicida! And directed right on the head of Ricochet, almost a headbutt intentionally there, off the Suicida. Ricochet's bell rung, that could certainly be paying Tyler Bate dividends, but it looks like Ricochet was able to shake the cobwebs off, at least for now. Back and forth, the pendulum of momentum swings. Your final quarter, final bout. Ricochet heads to the top. Wait a minute, going for the 6.30 and nobody home. Tyler Bate moving out of the way. Off the misstep. And I'm Tyler Bate picking the ankles one more time. Going for the reverse Boston. All the way for the UK. If Ricochet taps, we'll have a decision. If Ricochet taps, it's gonna be the big strong boy versus the invincible one next week. Oh, but once again, Ricochet went to the well and pulled out the rug from underneath Bate. Kick to the rib cage. Wait a minute. Tying up Tyler Bate into the roll up here. He got him. The three. He got him. Ricochet had to resort to the roll up and stole the victory over Tyler Bate, yet fair and square. Well, you know what? Tyler Bate's got nothing to be ashamed of. Falling short in the CWC tonight. He's got that big opportunity on Raw. And Ricochet's going to move forward to next Saturday afternoon in the semifinals of the Cruiserweight Classic after this phenomenal contest against the big strong boy here tonight. Here is your winner, Ricochet! Well, there you see the five that did remain, but we are down to the final four in the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Next Saturday afternoon at 3 p.m. Eastern Time Live, it will be the invincible Ilya Dragunov versus the one, the only, Ricochet in the semifinals of the CWC. And also come your way seven afternoons from right now, it is going to be Nathan Frazier, the hot prospect from NXT, who has bursted on the scenes in the midst of this tournament, taking on the whole shebang, Johnny Gargano. We are down to the final four participants who will make it to the finals of the Cruiserweight Classic at the finale in two weeks. Thank you for joining us this afternoon in Manhattan, New York, Hammerstein Ballroom. And don't forget, we'll be live Monday night for the season premiere of Raw and live next Friday for the season premiere of SmackDown, 5 p.m. Eastern time on both occasions. And we'll see you then. Good night, everybody. Prepare for the most exciting 10 minutes, a fast-paced 600 seconds, and all the action you can handle. Coming your way, exclusively, each and every Wednesday, only on the No Nation Gaming TikTok. The superstars of Raw and SmackDown race to the finish line on Velocity. Competition at an all-time high that you won't see anywhere else. Scan the QR code. Follow on TikTok and don't miss a second of Velocity. As Nathan Fraser will have his hands full with this man, the whole shebang, Johnny Gargano. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring from Cleveland, Ohio. Weighing in at 199 pounds, Johnny Gargano! Johnny Gargano defeating Akira Tozawa in the first round and defeating Dominic Mysterio in the quarterfinals. And now goes one-on-one -on -one 
with a man who has had a breakout performance in this tournament over the last number of weeks, that being NXT's Nathan Fraser, who is looking to solidify a permanent spot for himself on the main roster, whether that be on Monday Night Raw or where the Cruiserweight division lies on Friday Night SmackDown. But nonetheless, Gargano, Fraser, Dragunov, Ricochet, we started with 16, we are down to 4, and only two men can move on to next week's Cruiserweight Classic Finale and battle it out to get their name in the annals of history as the second ever winner of this prestigious tournament. Of course, a future opportunity at the Cruiserweight Championship on the line as well throughout this tournament. Could it be one of these gentlemen challenging for the Cruiserweight Gold in the near future? from Jersey in the Channel Islands, weighing in at 182 pounds, Nathan Frazier. Nathan Frazier defeating Wesley in the first round and Angel Garza of Los Lotharios in the quarters. And now certainly his biggest challenge to date with a former NXT Grand Slam champion and a man who earlier this year was one half of the WWE World Tag Team Champions in Johnny Gargano. Nathan Fraser has been a breakout performer throughout this tournament, as we mentioned. But not only the biggest match in this tournament, but the biggest match of his career as he goes one-on-one -on -one with Johnny Gargano. The semifinals are set, and we are set to kick them off here in Manhattan, New York. Gargano, Fraser, the bell has sounded. Who is moving on to the finale next week? We'll be live next Saturday afternoon, October the 7th. 3 p.m. Eastern time as we are right now as Nathan Fraser going for the quick pinfall over Gargano. This has been a grueling tournament over the last seven weeks and you gotta believe that these two men are starting to feel the fatigue of not only their Cruiserweight Classic battles, but of course Johnny Gargano hot off the heels of No Mercy two weeks ago where he teamed up against Imperium in a six-man tag team matchup and then just last week competing against Dominic Mysterio. Organo looking good, trying to get some early momentum over Frazier. Nathan Frazier, as we mentioned, an amazing performance in this tournament so far, but Johnny Organo not interested in Frazier's desire to move on. Tope suicide to the outside. Nathan Frazier, a former student of the current WWE Champion, Seth freaking Rollins. Certainly gonna be a future star here in the WWE, whether that be on Raw or SmackDown, but Johnny Gargano not looking to allow Frazier to build his career off Gargano's behalf. The spot in the finale is on the line, and of course next week a future opportunity at the Cruiserweight Championship will hang in the balance as well as the fight continues on the outskirts of the squared circle. Nathan Frazier showed some early promise, but Gargano has turned the table since that opening bell. Gargano looking sharp in the opening moments. He has watched this young man, Nathan Frazier, take this tournament by storm. Gargano not looking to be another stepping stone, and Frazier's climb to the top. So far, so good for the man they call Johnny Wrestling. Gargano's got so many ways to beat you inside the squared circle. And Nathan Frazier, who loves to take things to the air as we've seen throughout this tournament, looking for that high-risk maneuvers to take him to the promised land. Now it's Nathan Frazier fighting an uphill battle, just trying to get the momentum back on his side in this semi-final bout. He sends Gargano into the turnbuckles. And Nathan Frazier, little combination that we have seen throughout this tournament so far. Frazier sticking to what, is work, what is what worked in this tournament, just as he does right there, as he cradles himself up and soars through the skies of Manhattan, New York. Gargano just squashed on the outside of the ring, but might not have been enough to keep Johnny Wrestling down. Nathan Frazier, Nathan Frazier has utilized that Phoenix splash inside the squared circle to secure some victories throughout this tournament. Will that be the same result tonight? Sorgano wants spaghetti legs. Nathan Fraser looked like he was going for a springboard there. Didn't get what he wanted, and Gargano gonna take advantage. We call it high risk, high reward for nothing. Not easy maneuvers to execute, but Johnny Gargano gets his wish off the springboard. The poison rana. And only a one count there. But although the three may not have been heard throughout the Hammerstein ballroom, damage certainly done. 
to the man opposing Johnny Gargano tonight in Nathan Frazier. And now Nathan Frazier with an own springboard. Big time Acai Moonsault on Johnny Wrestling. Back and forth, the pendulum of momentum starts to swing in this semifinal bout here in the Cruiserweight Classic. Gargano just sending Fraser face first off the canvas. What an amazing tournament this has been over the last seven weeks. I want to thank you for joining us live yet again this Saturday afternoon. And once again, we will be live for the Cruiserweight Classic finale. And of course, feature the finals of this 16-man tournament and more next Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern time. You're not going to want to miss it. Gargano starting to pick up the momentum, pick up some steam. But just as we say that, there's Nathan Frazier with the tilt to whirl and the head scissors. Down goes Johnny Wrestling. And Gargano controlled the opening moments of this matchup. Frazier started to mount a comeback. And really, ever since then, it's been back and forth. Has the momentum swung between Gargano and Frazier? Gargano just cradling him up that time. Tried to go low. Nathan Frazier had it scouted. Could have been looking for the Gargano escape. But Nathan Frazier has done his homework. Coming into this matchup and delivers that standing shooting star press to the ribcage. Now whipping Gargano off into the ropes. What has Nathan Frazier got in mind? Wheels are turning to this young man. He's looking to punch his ticket to the finale of the CWC. Well, could be looking for a possible... Spanish fly by Nathan Frazier. Into the cover. Going to the finals, not just yet. Only a one count there on Johnny Gargano. But as we mentioned earlier, when Gargano hit that poison, Rana will say it again. Damage certainly done off the maneuver, although we did not hear a three. And Frazier going back to the well, sitting Gargano atop the ropes here. And a big time reverse mega suplex from the top. And that might do it. Gargano might be caught by surprise and again only a one count. Nathan Frazier is going to be racking his brain right now. What is he going to have to do to at least get a two on Johnny Gargano? Forget a three. Back into the corner. And Frazier trying to charge up a Johnny Wrestling met him halfway. Big time Lariat with some power behind it. An enthusiastic reversal by Gargano. And into the corner off the reverse. Oh, and I think we know what comes next. Slingshot onto the buckle. Nathan Frazier hurt, but is he down for good? Not just yet as Gargano not able to secure the three. Frazier survived, but for how much longer? Gargano unable to secure the three count, but can he secure a tap out? As Gargano locks in, the Gargano escape on Nathan Frazier, dead center of the canvas, nowhere to go. Frazier taps out, and Gargano is going to the finals. Nathan Frazier gave it his all with the fatigue of this tournament and the wherewithal of Johnny Gargano. A testament to Nathan Frazier, but ultimately catches up with him tonight. The slingshot did the damage, and Gargano put the final kill with the submission hold locked in and a tap out heard around the world. Here is your winner, Johnny Gargano. The whole shebang, the former NXT Grand Slam champion, Johnny Wrestling, Johnny Gargano. One half of your Cruiserweight Classic Tournament Finals next Saturday afternoon. There's the 16-man bracket that became four but now becomes three as Frazier's chances fade to black. But who will meet Gargano in the finals? Will it be Dragunov? Will it be Ricochet? We find out next. Well, next Saturday afternoon, Tyler Bate goes one-on-one -on -one with Akira Tozawa, plus the Cruiserweight Championship will be on the line. All of that and more coming your way at the Cruiserweight Classic Finale. But as we just found out moments ago, Johnny Organo, one half of your CWC Tournament Finals. But who is going to meet him there? Will it be the human highlight reel Ricochet? Or will it be this man, the invincible Ilya Dragunov? Scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring 
from Moscow, Russia, weighing in at 187 pounds, Ilya Dragunov. There was two Monday Night Raw participants in this entire tournament, Ilya Dragunov and Tyler Bate. Tyler Bate going out in the quarterfinals to Dragunov's opponent tonight, that being the human highlight reel ricochet. Tyler Bate finding other success on the season premiere of Raw this past week, becoming the number one contender for LA Knight's Intercontinental Championship. Those two will meet for the gold October the 22nd at Clash at the Castle. But as for Ilya Dragunov, he has found success in the midst of the CWC. Success that has really bounced him back since losing his Intercontinental Championship back in July to the defiant LA Knight. Dragunov has defeated Axiom as well as JD McDonough in this tournament so far, but now he meets Friday Night SmackDown's human highlight reel, the one and only Ricochet. This interpromotional battle is about so much more than just Raw versus SmackDown. It's about a spot in the finals. It's about facing Johnny Gargano next week and attempting to solidify your spot at the top of the cruiserweight division as the best cruiserweight all around the globe. Dragunov is locked and loaded, and here comes the opposer, the one, the only, Ricochet. And his opponent from Paducah, Kentucky, weighing in at 190 pounds, Ricochet. Ricochet defeating Humberto Carrillo in the first round, and as we just mentioned, defeating Tyler Bate in the quarterfinals. And the one and only is also hot off the heels over a victory against the Nigerian Giant Omas two weeks ago at the SmackDown exclusive No Mercy event. Now Ricochet back in action this Saturday night as he goes one-on-one -on -one with Ilya Dragunov in a matchup that could not see higher stakes. The semifinals of the CWC as this tournament has progressed over the last seven weeks, it all comes down to these very moments. Ilya Dragunov is ready. The human highlight reel is ready. Manhattan, New York has been anticipating this battle all week long, and it is time for your final semifinal matchup of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Dragunov, Ricochet, who meets Johnny Gargano next week? The bell has sounded and we are underway. Be a very interesting matchup. Dragging off all about the imposing strikes that he brings upon his opponents. Ricochet, of course, one of the highest flyers in the game today. Really a contrast of styles in this matchup. Who's going to get the upper hand as it progresses, however? All remains to be seen. Johnny Gargano defeating Nathan Frazier about under 10 minutes earlier tonight. That's going to do him well going into next week's battle. Short of the matchups tonight, the more. Rest up, you're going to have more energy reserved, less fatigue heading into the finals next week. Will one of these men be able to say the same? All remains to be seen as Dragunov trying to take the advantage over the one and only here in the early going. As we mentioned, this tournament has really been a bounce back for the invincible Ilya Dragunov. Had quite the year so far in 2023, winning the Intercontinental Championship back at WrestleMania. And as we just mentioned, losing the title back in July to LA Knight at Money in the Bank. But now Dragunov has really found some new feet underneath of him through the, through the midst of this Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. Will that momentum continue here tonight? Or will Ricochet play spoiler as he plays spoiler to that misstep by Dragunov right there? One and only has had quite the year as well. Number 2022, Ricochet was atop the Cruiserweight division. For damn near six months, losing the Cruiserweight Championship back on January the 1st of 2023 at the Royal Rumble. And then soon after went on to become one half of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic winners as well as previously a reign with the World Tag Team Gold as Dragunov sent to the outside. Ricochet, full steam ahead. What a maneuver through the ropes. A senton down to ringside. And Manhattan, New York coming unglued for the man they call the one and the only human highlight reel of Friday Night SmackDown. Ricochet putting on a showcase in that comeback. Just trying to mount some offense against Dragunov and certainly no waste of motion. Doing what he does best, taking things to the sky and not afraid to brawl a little bit if need be to wear down the invincible one. 
Now Ricochet going for a shooting star press, making a dose at ringside. And Dragunov trying to fight out between a rock and a hard place. Referees at a count of six. I'm really not sure what would happen if these two men were to get counted out. I don't know if we'd restart the matchup or if the finals would become a triple threat or if Johnny Gargano would just be proclaimed the winner. Hopefully we get a decisive victory tonight by a 1-2-3 or a submission hold. All remains to be seen, but Dragunov now, as we take things back inside the squared circle, delivers the high knee to the one and only. And Ricochet able to sidestep the lariat there. The quickness of the one and only certainly going to play in as both these men going for strikes, neither of them able to land. Dragunov, as we mentioned earlier, a lot of strikes in the arsenal, and Ricochet's quickness may be how he avoids disaster. Off the spine buster, definitely some power in the arsenal of Ricochet as well. Ilya Dragunov popping the shoulder off the canvas. Now Ricochet going to continue the fight as Ilya Dragunov down and out right now. Dragunov's got to start building some momentum, and there's a big-time lariat. Looking for that a few moments ago. Ricochet avoided it. This time to no avail. Now Dragunov goes underneath. A little bit of power in the arsenal of the Invincible one as well. Into the sit-down. Only a one count, but damage certainly done on the reverse. A great matchup so far between Ilya Dragunov and Ricochet. Both men battling it out for the spot in the finals against Johnny Gargano off the high knee. Will that do it? Gets the two, but unfortunately not the three. And again, coming your way, a part of the Cruiserweight Classic finale. One week from now, you're going to see the number one contender for LA Knight's Intercontinental Championship, Tyler Bate, in action. An interpromotional battle against Akira Tozawa. Well, I'm sure he's going to come out fired up after he was knocked out in the first round of the CWC. Also coming your way next Saturday, the Cruiserweight Championship going to be on the line as Santos Escobar once again defends the gold against Chad Gable. Absolutely tore down the house two weeks ago at no mercy. Santos Escobar retaining the gold on that night, but Chad Gable earning himself one more crack at the champ last night on SmackDown. Gable Escobar, round two, next Saturday, live at 3 p.m. Eastern time. And of course, that's all a part of the CWC finale, where we will witness the conclusion to what has been an amazing tournament over the last seven weeks. Drag it off the headlock takeover, keeping it simple yet effective. As he tries to keep the momentum on his side throughout this matchup. Yet to secure the three count, of course, but certainly damage starting to pay a toll on the one and only. Ricochet's got to get going. He's got to think on his feet here, trying to find a way to change the tides on Dragunov. Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide off that bare knee to the skull. The human body can only take so many of those strikes before you start to break down as Dragunov has really got his foot on the gas pedal right now. And Ricochet is feeling it. Ricochet may be hurt. Trying to start swinging. Springboard goes for the moonsault and nobody home. Ricochet was trying to mount a comeback. Dragunov not going to allow it. But off the reversal. Dropped down by Ricochet. Goes for the leapfrog. The one and only with the kickoff here. And send it Ilya Dragunov over the top. Beautiful counter and a comeback mounted by the human highlight reel. Now Dragunov on the outside trying to get his wits about him. Ricochet. He's met at a standstill right now as this matchup continues to progress and Ricochet strikes first and strikes hard. No mercy shown by the one and only. Remember what we mentioned a few minutes ago, Ricochet is hot off the heels, taking down the Nigerian giant Omas. Back at no mercy two weeks ago. Now Lily dragging off down and out, Ricochet hitting the ropes, looking for a little bit of that vintage human highlight reel action. A moonsault that almost nobody does better. You'd be remiss to find somebody who can fly through the sky as well as the one and only. Ilya Dragunov may be surviving, but certainly not thriving right now as Ricochet has still got his eyes on the weakened opponent. But who is going to get the final blow? Who is going to deal the death blow in this match as both men going for signature strikes and neither able to avail? And Dragunov, Blue Thunder, takes out Ricochet. 
Not enough spin on it as we usually see, but Dragunov mustering up anything he could in that moment to survive. A big time shoulder block off the middle buckle there, off Brett's rope. Almost similar to what we saw in the opening matchup between Gargano and Fraser. Momentum starting to swing back and forth between Dragunov and Ricochet. And a kick out there off the stiff lariat by Dragunov. Gotta wonder what it's gonna take. The battles these men have been in throughout the CWC. Fatigue is gonna start to set in at some point, especially at this late in the match. But who wants it more? Who wants to see their name in the spotlight? Next Saturday afternoon, live from Manhattan, New York. Ricochet getting the shoulder up off that German, but rolls to the outside, obviously hurt, obviously fatigued. But does he have enough wherewithal to get back into this matchup, or is he simply delaying the inevitable right now? Aerial attack by Dragunov. You see Ricochet not brought to his feet by, by will, but certainly by force of Dragunov. Ilya Dragunov may have Ricochet hurt, and it may be time to deal the death blow. Another lariat there. For how much longer can Dragunov even keep this up? There's Ricochet. Much needed kick. He's got to capitalize here. The one and only collar and elbow. And look at this. Somehow, this late in the matchup, Ricochet able to muster up some strength. This is what the CWC has been all about. These physical battles, these back and forth collisions. The will to see who wants it more. Big time super kick by Ricochet. But elects not to go for the cover just yet and realizes more damage must be done. Ricochet is not slowing down. Look at this. Selena Del Sol dragging off down once again. Ricochet has completely turned this match on its head. And dragging off down off the apron. A hard fall, especially in deep waters in this match. Ricochet may have just not only turned the tides of this match, but he may have just found the answer to defeating Ilya Dragunov here tonight. Back inside the ring, but might have took too long as Dragunov finds an opening and elects to capitalize into the pinfall situation. Not just yet. Ricochet might have saw his window of opportunity close there. Dragging off with the strike, making a dose, making a trace, goes for the fourth. Ricochet avoids. Close fist of his own. Muscles up, dragging off. Big time kick to the side of the dome. Who will take on Johnny Gargano next week? And how much will they have left in the tank to battle it out with that former NXT Grand Slam champion? The opportunity to not only become the second ever winner of the Cruiserweight Classic and punch your name in the annals of history as Ricochet goes for the 630, but nobody home. And drag it off. Might have just witnessed Ricochet's opportunity go up in smoke as the crash and burn leads to a weakened opponent. And I'll drag it off looking to pick the bones of the human highlight reel off the misstep. He went for the kill with the 630 to no avail. And I'll drag it off. Maybe a shark smelling blood in the water. Headbutt takes down Ricochet. Into the cover. Drag it off is going to the finals. Oh, what a epic collision between Ricochet and Dragunov here tonight. Both men throwing everything in their willpower to succeed at each other. But in the end, the 630 that did not go Ricochet's way, as you see right there, ends up being his biggest detriment. The torpedo headbutt leads to the one, two, and most importantly, the three for the Invincible One. Here is your winner. Sixteen men have become two. The final two, Johnny Gargano and Ilya Dragunov. Next Saturday afternoon, live at 3 p.m. Eastern time, we will witness the finale to what has been an amazing Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. The whole shebang, Johnny Wrestling, Johnny Gargano, 
versus the invincible Ilya Dragunov. What an interpromotional cruiserweight classic final that is going to be next Saturday afternoon. Also, Akira Tozawa set to battle Tyler Bate, and Santos Escobar puts the Cruiserweight Championship on the line one more time against Alpha Academy's Chad Gable. Thank you for joining us this afternoon, and please join us next week for the Cruiserweight Classic Finale, live at 3 p.m. Eastern Time, right here in Manhattan, New York. Good night, everybody. Can't get enough universe mode? Well, now is your chance to secure a backstage pass to more universe than ever before. Become a Noah Nation Gaming Channel member and gain entry into monthly house shows that directly affect your episodic viewing of universe mode. Also, take a peek behind the curtain with behind the scenes updates, exclusive content to see how universe mode is brought to life each and every week. Hit the join button down below, become a Backstage Pass channel member, and get your front row seat to more universe than ever before. It's a better time than any to become a No Nation Gaming channel member, Saturday night, October the 12th, Saturday night, October the 26th. Witness the exclusive Halloween Havoc events. Hit the join button down below or the link up in the cards. Become a Noah Nation Gaming channel member today and don't miss out on Halloween Havoc. We started with 16. We are down to two. The winner of this match has their name etched in the annals of history as the second ever winner of the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament and also earns a future opportunity at Santos Escobar and the WWE Cruiserweight Championship of the World. The following contest is scheduled for one fall, making his way to the ring from Moscow, Russia. Weighing in at 187 pounds, Ilya Dragunov! Ilya Dragunov has defeated Axiom, JD McDonough, and the one and only Ricochet to earn his spot in the finals here tonight. We have talked about how the Cruiserweight Classic has been a comeback tour for Ilya Dragunov ever since his Intercontinental Championship reign came to an end back in July by hands of LA Knight. Dragunov has found a new leash, a part of this CWC tournament. Upon a win tonight, could find himself a part of the Friday Night SmackDown brand and earning himself a future opportunity at the Cruiserweight Championship. Dragunov has all the tools to be a success here tonight, but stands eye to eye with his opposer, Johnny Gargano. Both of these men have had decorated careers thus far. But it all comes down to this moment. We set it at the top of the hour. The lights are on bright. Tonight is the night where superstars are made. Who will seize the opportunity and win the Cruiser Weight Classic? And his opponent from Cleveland, Ohio, weighing in at 199 pounds, Johnny Gargano. Johnny Gargano earning victories over Akira Tozawa, Dominic Mysterio, and Nathan Fraser last week to make his way to the finals here tonight. It has not been an easy road for either of these men, and both different roads in that. Johnny Gargano facing a, certainly an emotional battle, and Dominic Mysterio in the quarterfinals, the uprising of Nathan Fraser last week, but in the end, Johnny Gargano just wanted it more than all those superstars. But who wants it more tonight? Gargano, Dragunov. This is what we've waited the last eight weeks to determine. Who is going to be the winner of the Cruiserweight Classic? It is tournament finals time in the Hammerstein Ballroom, Manhattan, New York. Saturday afternoon, October the 7th, 2023. The bell has sounded and we are underway. Johnny Gargano in the green. Ilya Dragunov in the white. An interpromotional battle. 
Dragunov representing Raw, Gargano representing SmackDown. As we mentioned, Ilya Dragunov wins this matchup. He could find himself a part of the SmackDown brand. All remains to be seen though, Johnny Gargano really stumbled for a couple of months ever since being drafted to Monday Night Raw, but throughout the summer and through the CWC has found single success. And that knee by Dragunov certainly not gonna lead to any success for anybody but the invincible one, but Johnny Gargano willing to come out swinging as well. Gargano sitting Dragunov into the ropes. Big time leg lariat there. Should be very interesting to see who gets the early advantage if this match turns to a very back and forth collision. If one man opposed to the other wants to utilize more strikes, which will most likely be Dragunov, Gargano, I would say has the aerial advantage in this match. It'll be very interesting to see how it progresses. It's so much riding on the line after fighting your way to the finals over the last eight weeks. Neither one of these men want to feel crushed in defeat when they hear a second bell. And now Johnny Gargano looking pretty good. Dragunov came out hot with that opening knee, but Gargano, it's as if that knee was an early wake-up call. Looking for the early victory. Obviously, I think knew he wasn't going to get the win that time, but as we mentioned earlier, forcing your opponent to expend that energy. While Gargano, wait a minute, things already dished into the outside, and as we mentioned, Gargano, a little bit of aerial offense. Oh man, turning the Tope Suicida into a Tornado DDT on the outside of the ring. And Manhattan, New York coming unglued in the early moments of this Cruiserweight Classic finale. Now Gargano keeping the pedal to the metal on the outside. Dropping dragon off on the floor of Hammerstein. You know, it's interesting to note, as we mentioned, Johnny Gargano stumbled for a few months on Friday Night SmackDown. And it started to really build some momentum on the blue brand throughout the summer. It kind of all started here in the Hammerstein Ballroom, a part of the WWE live event for channel members only back in June, a win over Chad Gable right here in Hammerstein Ballroom. And as Gargano soars through the sky and a splash to the outside, Johnny Gargano looking to continue his success under the bright lights of Hammerstein. And drag it off with his back up against the wall, knows one answer, and that's to start swinging. And you notice, after all that offense on the outside, dished by Gargano to Dragunov, somehow the invincible Ilya Dragunov, the first one back inside the squared circle. Oh, now Dragunov, fired up right now, going for those double lariats, squashing his opponent in the corner. Now, Ilya Dragunov is just a a different breed inside of that ring. This is a man who thrives off punishment and pain. There's a reason back in 2021 that Ilya Dragunov ended the 870 day reign of Imperium's Ring General Gunther for the NXT United Kingdom Championship. Dragunov thrives off the fight, thrives off the competition, and most importantly, thrives off the pain. Johnny Gargano, a man who has seemingly had his back up against the wall, has been the underdog his entire career, has made the most out of being in that position. First ever NXT Triple Crown winner for a reason. Already in just the first few minutes of this matchup, these two are putting on a showcase for the sold out Hammerstein Ballroom and everyone watching around the globe. Johnny Gargano hanging up, dragging off in the ropes there, not afraid to get a little, little bit dirty in this matchup if need be, but don't turn your back on the Cesar. The invincible Ilya Dragunov ripcord lariat with emphatic force behind it, and now off the apron, dropping the sledgehammer. Now back up on the apron, Ilya Dragunov throwing caution in the wind using his own body as a weapon to inflict punishment on the whole shebang. I mean, if you're ever gonna throw caution in the wind, if you're ever gonna risk for the reward, tonight is the night and the matchup to do it. There's no going back. This has been a single elimination tournament for the last eight weeks. Go big, go home. As Dragunov ragdolls Gargano off the top right there, 
Looking to inflict some more damage on Johnny wrestling inside the squared circle. Ilya Dragunov has had one hell of a year. Already the Intercontinental Champion, winning it back at WrestleMania, holding it for several months, becoming one of the faces of Monday Night Raw. Johnny Gargano, as we mentioned in the tale of the tape, WWE World Tag Team Champ with Tommaso Ciampa earlier this year. That short-lived reunion of DIY came to an end thanks to the WWE draft back in March which sent Johnny Gargano on a whole new journey on Friday Night SmackDown that has continued throughout this tournament. Now Dragunov looking to start a whole new journey for himself here tonight. Off the shoulder block, into the cover. And Gargano survives at least for another moment. Now Dragunov cannot get frustrated when he is in there with Johnny wrestling. We have seen Gargano in some of the biggest wars in NXT history with Tommaso Ciampa, Adam Cole, tag team matches with the Revival. Johnny Gargano has been in the ring with some of the best. And that's just talking about his NXT days. Just in the last couple of months, this year, on Raw, on SmackDown, Gargano has fought some of the best. Almost had Dragunov right there. Gargano, of course. Oh, wait a minute. Hold that thought as Dragunov rolls to the outside. Gargano out of the ring and to the floor using his body as a weapon. Shot out like a cannon, like a bullet, to Ilya Dragunov off the tope suicida. And Dragunov a little bit rocked, taking his time heading back inside the ring as Gargano awaits his opponent there, and look at that. Almost lying in wait as Dragunov got up on the apron and Gargano caught him off guard. A tope suicida might have changed the tides of this match. Oh, wait a minute, Gargano there left the window of opportunity. A little bit of hesitation, waited too long. Ilya Dragunov going to capitalize. Now Dragunov, nice overhead throw. Oh, what a great matchup this has been so far. And you notice neither man going for any of their signature maneuvers just yet. Knowing coming into this that their opponents were going to be just as motivated as themselves. Almost anticipating this match that may go the distance tonight and wanting to save their best shots for the end. Oh, wait a minute, Gargano. Well, he may feel the end is near. He's got it locked in. Johnny wrestling with the Gargano escape on Ilya Dragunov. It's so dangerous, the drop toe hold out of nowhere. The hands locked around the mouth. Referee's gotta watch, make sure they don't slip under the jaw. A little bit of our vantage point. This turns into a choke. Dragunov may pass out in the middle of Hammerstein Ballroom. Oh, Ilya, not afraid to throw some strikes. I mean, it's what he's best at for anything. And Dragunov going for a lariat there. Gargano able to avoid it. Full Nelson, face first off the canvas. Into the cover to win the CWC. Not just yet, not just yet. The matchup rolls forward and Dragunov survives. Yeah, we have seen some amazing matches over the last eight weeks, but Gargano and Dragunov may be putting on the best showcase yet in the midst of the CWC. Sidestep by Dragunov. Wait a minute. May have the power advantage. Nice sit out into the power bomb. Gargano gets the shoulder up. That was a nice comeback by Dragunov there. After Gargano escaped the full Nelson slam, Dragunov saw a window of opportunity, he took it. The sit-out powerbomb may not have gotten the three, but damage is done. And the matchup progresses for the Cruiserweight Classic Crown. Hooked into the ropes, another high knee by Dragunov. And that might have just knocked Johnny Gargano's lights out for good. The Gargano gets the shoulder off the canvas, and you see Gargano putting so much effort behind it, so much energy behind that kick out. Wanted to make sure Dragunov knew that he has still got a lot of fight left. Counter by Gargano. Don't turn your back on the invincible one, though. Nice maneuver by Dragunov there, using the ropes to his advantage. Little springboard, little lariat for emphatic force. Gargano back into the corner as Ilya Dragunov looking to dish out some blows. Dragunov may feel a sense of urgency after Gargano locked in. 
The Gargano escape a few moments ago. Drag it off off the top with a major senton. But Gargano still has got fight left in him. This is going to come down to the nitty gritty. You just got to have a feeling. These two men are going to leave everything and the kitchen sink inside that squared circle tonight. Blood, sweat, and tears as Gargano. Look at the pace that Gargano has instituted in this match. Leaving Dragunov almost on the run into the corner. Face first off the buckle. Gargano starting to throw some strikes, realizes he's got to wear down. Ilya Dragunov here. And now the whole shebang with a couple of pair of boots to the back of the neck. What is it going to take in this matchup to secure a three count or a submission hold? Wow, what a maneuver by Gargano off the middle buckle. Tilt to whirl, face first goes Dragunov. That is not going to go well as we continue to inch closer and closer to the deep waters of your Cruiserweight Classic Finals. Drag oh man. Open palm strikes that Dragunov loves to throw. We said earlier, Dragunov, he thrives off pain. He also loves dishing it out. Gargano trying to avoid it as the pendulum of momentum begins to swing back and forth in your CWC finale. Dragging off up against the ropes this time. And Gargano looking to take advantage, not keeping it, they're not going pretty, I should say, keeping it real simple. Trying to wear down the invincible one. Oh man, double boots to the face, and here we go again. That time with a little bit of added force. Going for the senton. Making it a dose. Businesses pick it up in this main event affair. Drag it off with a third. And Gargano on the run this time. Who has got more left in the tank? Both these men participated in the semifinals just seven nights ago, right here in Hammerstein Ballroom. They've had the they've had the week to rest and recuperate. Oh wait a minute, but Gargano looking for the final blow, right into the corner, slingshot, knockout blow. No, Dragunov kicks out. Gargano thought he had it there. Oh, Dragunov springing to his feet. But look at Johnny wrestling. Gargano escape is locked in. And man, oh man, has he got it in tight. Dragunov may have kicked out, but does he have enough left in the tank to survive a second submission hold by Johnny wrestling? Dragunov struggling to hold on. He may be fading here. The referee's asking. Hammerstein Ballroom waits with gasping breath. Oh man, another knee. Right to the back of the skull and a closed fist. Enough to at least create some distance. Man, that really shows the intestinal fortitude of Ilya Dragunov right there. Just how bad he wants to win this matchup. Muscling out of a second Gargano escape. Knee right to the jaw. Oh, make it a second. Dragunov may be realizing he might need to knock out Johnny Gargano in order to secure a three count. Using those bare knees to his advantage. Ilya Dragunov. Starting to mount a comeback in your main event. Gargano rolling to the outside. And I think it might be smart for Dragunov to take a moment here. Take a rest. I know you're allowing Gargano the same thing, but after... What Dragunov just went through a few moments ago. Take the minute to breathe, reset, recuperate. Or go to the top as Dragunov with the cross body to the outside from the heavens of Hammerstein. And down goes Gargano. Ilya Dragunov, any means necessary. Oh man, could we go for that running power on the outside? But Johnny Gargano escapes. A couple of close fists, a forearm for good measures. And it's Gargano sending Dragunov back inside the ring. Not by will, but by force. Toe to toe, eye to eye, these men stand. And Dragunov sends Gargano over. Momentum swinging back and forth, but who can sustain it long enough to get the three count? Lariat! Dragunov! 
with some fire in the eyes. Gargano's down, but instead of going for the three, Dragunov is going for the kill. Torpedo Moscow and coming. No, Gargano sidesteps it. Nobody home off the headbutt. Gargano, jump toe hold by Dragunov. Oh man, Gargano dodging the Torpedo Moscow by Ilya. But now it's Dragunov awaiting Gargano to get to his feet. Hammerstein on their feet. Here comes Dragunov, Torpedo Moscow, head to head, bone to bone. Gargano is down. But Dragunov's not done. One is not enough, he needs a dose. Make it a second into the cover. Ilya Dragunov is victorious in the Big Apple. After eight long weeks of grueling competition, the CWC comes to a close. An amazing effort by Johnny Gargano, but no human soul can survive not one, but two Torpedo Moscows by the invincible Ilya Dragunov. Your Cruiserweight Classic 2023 tournament winner and number one contender to the Cruiserweight Championship, Ilya Dragunov. Thank you for joining us over the last eight weeks here in Manhattan, New York. What a, a tournament it has been. And from all of us here, thank you and good night from New York City.